Ready? Uh, yeah. You gotta, yeah. Gotta what? What's your favorite Morrissey song? You want to start with that? Whatever, man. Um, my my like reflex answer is, uh, the world is full of crashing boars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I just made a play. I made a Morrissey playlist the other day. Did you? For old Brittany Miller, because she's a hater, and I was like, "Listen, is she really? That's yeah, surprising, but, actually." But like, she's not, you know. Mm-hmm, 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 and then mm-hmm. I was like, "Look at, listen to these, and you're good to go." Interesting. What I got in here? I mean, yeah, it's just, just hits, man. He's got. I mean, there's something on every record. Yeah, you know, S- Speedway was the song where I was like, "I'm a fan of this." Yeah, Speedway is that's that's my chest tattoo. Big I've big Speedway I know. guy. I know. Oh. Um, Not everybody reads, man. You know, everybody. Yeah, uh, <laughs> dude. Dear, dear God, please help me. The Ennio Morricone track mm-hmm. that they did. Oh my God, beautiful. Um, I, I like you have killed me a lot, but that's like as I live and breathe, you dude. have killed me. Unbelievable, incredible track. I loved me being like a nineteen-year-old and hearing like Pavarotti and me being like, I know exactly what he's talking about. When Lana like stubs my toe or something, I hit her. <laughs> I hit her with "You have killed me." No uh, point saying this again. <laughs> right. The last two tracks, the last song on uh, what's what's the fucking record after Quarry? Years of Refusal. Mm-hmm. The last song on Years of Refusal, I'm okay by myself. Mm-hmm. And the last song on Quarry, the uh, you know I couldn't last. Those are <sighs> those are way up there for me. The, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, you're the Quarries and. Um, Years of Refusal is fucking awesome. It's like a ha- it's like a punk record. It kind of is. Black Cloud. Black Cloud. Black Cloud. Uh, but a uh, hello, welcome. Yeah, yeah. We Who do we got that. today, Colin? We got us, man. It's episode oh. thirty. This is a huge milestone. We're gonna Thank do a little Q and A, but we're also gonna have a little chat first because Bo and I gotta catch up a little. We we gotta catch up. It's we were talking about um, our favorite canceled things last week. <laughs> and, like, before we started recording today, I was like, it's, I mean, Morrissey's the best canceled thing. Yeah. Because he's like, every day somebody posts something about this guy that goes viral being like, yeah. this guy is a scumbag and he's garbage. And then yeah. I, and you can't help but be like, as I live and breathe, yeah. you have killed me. So, I mean, Morrissey's the best canceled thing ever. I think you know what? That's a really good answer. I think I don't think you can really still going. It's still going. Still well, selling out of. venues, still leaving early because he's because <laughs> it's cold out. Because he felt a chill. And then but then as I live and breathe, you have killed me, you know? There was a time when he was doing US shows. He really liked Chicago. He he like I mean, I'm sure he tells that to all the cities, but like I there's really like a like Chicago. Yeah, where he uh, he canceled a bunch of tours like in a row, mm-hmm. and he lived in Chicago for like 16 weeks at this <laughs> one spot on Michigan Avenue, and people would see him all the time. Wow. And there's a story. I don't even remember the names, so I can't be offensive to anyone. There's a story about him going into the Burberry store, and this guy who Love a friend him. of mine knew was working at Burberry, and he would just like come in and just like kind of shop and buy expensive things and not and blah, blah, blah. But he kept visiting. And then one day he invited this guy to his, where he was staying for pesta. Fuck yeah. And uh, the guy didn't like get it. And he was like, oh, no, thank you. Hmm. Would you let? I was just about to say, would you fuck, <laughs> would you fuck Morrissey? Would you let Morrissey peg you? Is that what's going on? I guess it's not really pegging, is it? I'm, I'm you know, I'm a married man, so. <laughs> I'm. I'm off the I'm off the market for for old Steven. Yeah. What about you? You what getting pegged me? by Morris? No, I don't think so. I don't think um, for the bit to like just to talk yeah, about yeah, it on, right, the, yeah. on the show. Okay, I can firmly say maybe, okay. probably not. But just to be like, dude. <laughs> Guess what I did? <laughs> I mean, you know, what is that one line that I heard that you try anything twice? That's about you getting pegged by Morrissey. He wrote that anyway. Album? So before before we get into the Q and A, I gotta tell you a story. Yeah, you do. I do. I'm supposed so, to be converted. So hit the button. 
So I I went to Vegas. I went to Vegas last weekend. Right. The main reason I went was to go to the Zach Bagans (laughs) Haunted Museum. Yes. I've heard great things. Big fan of Ghost Adventures. Big fan of the whole Zach Bagans franchise, frankly. Oh, I got you. So he's like directly involved. It's his. Everything in there is his. Understood. So it's like he bought everything. He arranged everything. He and his team. uh, And there's like crazy shit in there. I'll just start from the top. (laughs) So before we get in, Lana's like very uncomfortable. Lana's my wife. I went with Lana and Brittany Miller. Uh, friend of the show, Brittany Miller, featured in the Haunt Lore. Star of the show. Star of Haunt Lore. Our PA, Brittany Miller, is here with us as well. <laughs> Go back and check that out. Um, went with the two of them. Lana's a scaredy cat, but she loves Zach Bagans, so she was, like, excited to do it. And then okay. as we're going in, she's getting real nervous about it. Mm-hmm. Just because she's got the willies. She's got the CBGBs, you know? She, <laughs> yeah. She's scared. Um and then, you know, she kind of gets assured, like, you know, you know, it's fun. Like, it's nothing's going to happen. No, nothing's going to pop out and grab you. There's no jump scares, you know, which was mostly true. Uh, but in the f- when we enter, you you get into this room with a bunch of just like memorabilia, you yeah. know, yeah. it's just and then it, it's kind of comforting. You're just like, oh, this is just this some guy's stuff. I'm going to okay. see some guy's stuff for two and a half hours, basically. Okay. It, it flies by, I promise. <laughs> the very first thing you do is go into this closet full of, like, haunted dolls, where he'll, it'll be, like, all of these doll. every doll in this closet has been cited to have some sort of activity. Mm-hmm. And every, like, guest or every every visitor of the museum, anybody that's reported seeing a doll do something has reported a different doll doing something, essentially. Mm. And Lana, at this point, is just like, okay, I'm here for fun. So she's the first one in. She's the first one to be like, I'll go. Dope. Um, so I, even I'm like, this is fu- kind of feels kind of <laughs> fucked up. Your body feels... Like twenty pounds heavier the whole time you're in this house. It's it, I can't I can't describe it any way other way other than you feel like a stronger gravitational pull. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you do two or three more rooms, and at this point I'm like, man, I feel weird. And Lana's the one who's like, I feel totally normal. Don't put that on me. Is her yeah, words yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like don't bring your bullshit over to me. And then we get to the Doctor Kavorkian room which is two separate rooms. It's it's an office full of his like office supplies and stuff. Nice. And Dr. Kevorkian was of course very very famously known as Dr. Death for yeah. having assisted in 200 plus like medical suicides. And remind me did he do it only to willing patients or yes. did he also kill well, unwilling patients? Well, he did it to willing patients, but there are, are reports of some maybe in the last moments being like, wait, I don't want to do this. And those are the, like, the, I'm jumping ahead here. Yeah. yeah but yeah. those are the ones who, when communicated via like spirit box or stuff or something they were, like they weren't ready, they spell out their names. Mm-hmm. Like it'll be like fucking. There, I forget. There's exact. There's one that exact like said their last name on the spirit box, and then they looked it up, and they were like, "This is like one of the most famous ones that apparently didn't actually want to die or something." Mm-hmm. But in this in the office, you you start out in there, and they play this little video for you, saying that like some people feel uncomfortable during this next part, <laughs> and then you go into the next room where the actual little VW van was where all these suicides happened. Oh, they so happened the, in a van? Yeah. I assume they happened in the hospital. A t- okay. No, it wasn't allowed. To, he wasn't allowed to do it. So he's doing back alley assisted suicides, basically. Right, but it's not like he's shooting people in the head. He was injecting them. Yeah, right? he's injecting them. And so, they have it set up with a dummy showing uh, you, like, where it was positioned and, like, how the vials were. And it's basically the same that, thing as, like, uh, if you're on death row and you get the thing. I assumed he was just doing that in the hospital. Oh, yeah. No. And was it, was it like, was he riding a gray area or was it like fully? Big time gray area. Big time gray area. Yeah, but like it cool. wasn't, it wasn't like, was it illegal? Yes. So he would advertise in newspapers, 
like kind of subtly. Wow. From what I understand from the tour. But yeah. basically, when we get into the van room, Lana says, I feel like I'm going to pass out. <sighs> and over the intercom, Zach starts narrating and says, many women specifically have noted that they feel like they're going to pass out in this room. And then Lana has to like leave. And they explain that like something about just one of these fucking spirits or or Dr. Kevorkian themselves like targeted women in in some way. Mm-hmm. And when she when she has to leave, she's like blacking out. And like the 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 staff from the 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 museum are like, are you okay? Like, can we help get you somewhere? And she says that when she's talking to them, it sounds like a grenade is going off. It just went off. And, like, her ears are ringing and she can't hear what they're saying. Are you freaking out at this point? I, she, this happens. She's like, hey, I got to step out. And that's all I see. Oh, I see. So I don't see her for an hour because she steps out and you have to turn your phone off to be in there. Ooh, so as okay. far as I know, they're taking care of her. Of course. I'm definitely like, where the fuck is my what? You know? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I'm also like, this was really expensive. So, <laughs> uh, so they bring you into this like room of serial killer memorabilia at, yeah. right after that, and that's when Lana's like, I gotta get out of here. And so she's she's here. <laughs> sounds like a grenade went off. Right. They're they're trying to guide her out and help her, and she just keeps saying like, I don't know what's going on. Like she's just so disoriented, uh, and she finally sits down. And, and they explain to her, like, hey, like, this happens specifically with women in this room sometimes. Like, you are not the first. And then they, like, play a video where, like, a couple other women have fainted in the room. Uh, and one... Was one, Brittany fine? Brittany was fine. But they specifically targeted Lana here. I guess It's like one per tour or something gets fucking mm. targeted. Mm. Um, and one of them explained to her, like... Hey, like, it's very possible that something latched onto you in that moment, and that's why you were blacking out and like and couldn't really tell what was going on. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so she was outside for like an hour, and then Brittany and I went downstairs to the basement where like uh, J- Jenna Jameson's family used to live in this house. Fuck yeah! And I guess her dad was part of some crazy occult shit. Okay. And there was like rituals and sacrifices done in the basement. And we go in that basement and there's like a pentagram painted on the ground. There's a spirit box on. Yeah. Uh, just just kind of gnarly stuff, but nothing that really scared me until Lana kind of told me that story. Because I, 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 she's total skeptic. Yeah. 100%. And she's like, I don't know after what I just felt. So that's it. Kind of. That's the story. I mean, kind of. If you were there, you you would have it would have really fucked with you, man. I'm telling he, you. Colin the timing- texted me. Hold on. My the floor is mine now. All right. Take it. Colin texted me. He was like, I can't wait to tell you what happened to me in Las Vegas. And I was like, <laughs> all right. I can't wait either. Okay. And it was basically. Lana had to go outside. It was not Lana had to go outside. Lana felt like she was going to pass out in the section where one second later, the narrator said, sometimes women feel like they have to pass out in here. There have been reports. And then that happened. Like, there was two. There was, that's no coincidence. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. She was targeted by a specter. <laughs> All right. You're going to deny? I'm going to say that I think people's minds do things to them. Why do you get nervous when I'm gonna, you meet? My body's going to do something to you. <laughs> people get nervous when they meet fucking like celebrities and shit. And it's no, like, they're no. just people. No. I mean, yeah, people get nervous. So. No, no, they don't. No, one, no one's ever gotten Nobody's ever gotten nervous. But this so, is, a, I guess, you know, I think you and I have to go. It, I, I would go for sure. But I mean, that's certain. Don't get me wrong. I, that's certainly something. It is something. See? I'm not going to, I can't say that like Lana didn't experience this X, Y, and Z. Does right. that mean that it was fucking? I, I don't. I don't think so. More than likely, yes. <laughs> I would say less than. Is how, no, I would say more than likely is how I'm leaning. 
But uh, this Vegas is, was good this, otherwise. No, I lost thousands. <laughs> thousands. Yeah. I ate shit, man. Yeah. Let me tell you. But I'm here now, and I got a podcast still. So yeah, here he is. And this is episode thirty, and it's a Q and A. I'm trying to think of what's been going on with me. You what know? have you been doing? Boy, uh, a whole lot of nothing. Sleeping. Uh, I got that cleaning service. She did a great job. So that happened, and it it was good. It was for what I paid. It was great for what you paid. I would have farted in your face and left. If I would have paid the full price, was eighty bucks. And if I would have paid the full price for what oh. she did, I would have been pissed because it wasn't. And I, hey, tipped, dude, you honestly. know how much it costs to like get your apartment clean professionally for real? Twenty dollars, apparently. No, no, that's not right. You're a slaver. <laughs> dude, they Lincoln, paid her. Lincoln it's is just a voucher to grave. get you into this the program. That's all. I don't think it is. <laughs> she didn't get paid at all. Um, uh, I'm still sick. I'm still talking like I got a ball yeah, in my what throat. What the fuck is your problem, dude? Dude, this thing happens too where anytime I'm eating, food will like kind of go up into my nose. Because mm-hmm. like something back there is so swollen that I can't swallow properly. Mm. Like I really don't, I don't know what's going on. It's been two months. It's been kind of crazy. So yeah, that's I'm sick, cool. I'm sick of it, frankly. I know. I'm so sick of it. Um, you take care of yourself, all right? You drink some water. That's you know? all I do is drink fucking water. That's all I got. All right, stop drinking water then. Me think that's the problem. It's poisoned. Mm. What kind of water are you drinking? Uh, Gatorade water, like sugar free Gatorade water. Yeah, but water. where's the water from? Filtered from my, I have a Brita. Maybe change the filter. I have actually since I was sick. Okay. I even got the like deluxe ones that filter out lead because God knows. Lord knows what this True. building's got. My building got bought, so I'm going to probably have to move out soon. Yeah, RIP this. You want yeah, to yeah. come to move in my spare bedroom? or? Yeah, maybe I should, huh? Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just me, two cats, like seven guitars. Oh, come on, brother. Not a chance. Um, um, yeah, so i got to figure that out probably by the end of the winter. That's cool. Dude, that's brutal. How many times have we talked about on this show being like, man, my setup is unbelievable. I'm yeah. never leaving this place. Yeah. And then one day I literally woke up to like, hey, just so you know, uh, building got purchased. Here's the like the info of how to pay rent. I think that with your whole black mold thing, you should be looking into some. The some thing that here. really sucks is if my land, if Mr. Brother, mm-hmm. I've never told the story of Mr. Brother no. on, on the show. Okay. This is one of my favorite stories ever. Okay. My landlord my former landlord who I had been renting for, for 10 years in March. Okay. Um, or would have been 10 years in March. Didn't know my name in like year five. And he called me like he's you, did he lease the unit to you directly to me? Like he's your name is on every document, every check I give him (laughs) for five years. He sees Bo and he goes, Brother. So so he is a Pakistani man. He's a okay. practicing Muslim. So he calls out of respect people brother, whatever. There was a guy who used to do maintenance and you'd call him brother Asamand. His, his name was Asamand. And but then also he knows he's like in a Western country, out of respect here, we say Mr. Right? It's kind of like, hello, Mr. Young, whatever. So he called one day God and he left me right. a voicemail and he said, Hello, Mr. Brother, this is landlord. <laughs> And and ever since it was just like wow, Mister Brother is like so awesome. Was Mister Brother a one time call out? He has called me brother, and he's called me Mister Bo. I don't know if Mister Brother was ever used before, but I have it record. Like I have it, but it was one time. It was one time, okay. but like recorded, and I like couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah, Mister Brother is very funny. He also he called Casey lived here for you know seven eight years called her Kelsey, <laughs> and then kitten and then one time, dude kitten. one time he came in and was like looking around and he was like, she looks pretty today I don't know why like in front of her. This man's a menace. So Holy he's gone. Fuck. That's cool. Yeah. But what he could have done was he could have had me sign a year lease to yeah. protect me for a year yeah. at my current rent. Just. No, no, you're getting that 200% increase soon, brother. But uh, what were we talking about before that? 
ghosts and bullshit. Ghosts and bullshit. Being we're getting, sick, we're getting, mold. Oh, yeah, you getting kicked out, essentially, is what's happening. Yeah, I'm getting kicked sure. out, for So sure. before you get evicted, we got to get this Q&A going. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do Twitter? Or do you Let's do, do Twitter first. first. You know, we, we, we left this up to you guys, and you delivered a little too hard, I'll be honest with you. Hey, whoa, uh, a little bow spinning. <laughs> whoa! Okay. Oh, very nice. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if there was something really embarrassing on this? I would just love that. <laughs> hit, the D, hit, hit the DM button. Hit the message. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Type P. Type P. Do, do it again. All right. What are your favorite non-heavy bands? What's the softest thing you like? Me? Yeah. Uh, other, other than Morrissey? Which um, is like, I feel like Morrissey's like not even surprising. No, it's it's like borderline post-punk at this point. You know, like, yeah. and it's just, that's a natural pipeline. It really is. And um, I never understood, but it is. It, it just is. It's just, yeah. you can't, you can't explain it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a notorious Lady Gaga man. Oh, that's true. Big I time. remember also on, on the European tour, you were huge into Tay Swift. I loved uh, Speak Now. Absolutely love Speak Now. Still do. But after, I, I like Red. Yeah. After that, I'm not really, she lost me. Once the country was gone, I was out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I love me. I, I mostly listen to to film scores, so like a like Dude, a Hans that, Zimmer. Or, God. Earlier today, I'm playing New World. It's just a, a game. They had Fresh Start Service. You're still so playing over. that? Well, they had Fresh Start Service, so I like started over to kind of get myself back into it, and I'm just like fully upset. The game is so fucking good. That's how I but, feel about Vampire Survivor right now. Dude. You're loving it. I'm that obsessed. game rocks, huh? Yeah, I'm because I, I play was playing a, an iPhone version called Survivor IO. I, I got hooked on that because of you. Okay, and it's the that Vampire Survivor is basically like the swagged out dude. When big you dick sent version. it to me, I told you there's a PC version of this that this is definitely ripping off. Oh, that's what you were fed. talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and goddamn, it's a mess. It, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's um, and the the you know the new world is very frontiersy, and I was reminded of the fucking last of the Mohicans. One of the greatest of all time. Unbelievable. One of the greatest ever. Who scored that? Howard? Trevor Jones and Randy Edelman, I believe. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're so you're a film scores guy. I'm recently I'm getting into um when I do housework and like chores and mm -hmm. errands and bullshit. I like to listen to just like, like Brian Eno and like, just like ambient nothing. Yeah. So I got into that, that thing I sent you that, um, music, uh, music for 18 musicians that is all analog, but it's like woodwinds going in syncopation. It's like fucking crazy. So that, I love Choir Boy. Very vocal about I that. I was going to say, this motherfucker loves Choir Boy. That's like the softest thing on earth, which it makes it hard. You know what I mean? I get that. I'm a big fan of Choir Boy. But um, I love Bjork. We don't have time to spend yeah. this much time on every question. I'll tell you well. What. What fast food mascot do you think would pit the hardest? My money is on Ronald. My sleeper pick is the Noid, but I can picture Jack in the Box windmill with reckless. Jack abandoned. in the Box for sure. I mean, Hamburglar is like fucking. He he's a, he's an everybody gets hurt. Head, Over you Grimace, know? dude. No, you know what? Grimace is at the side of the pit doing. Yeah, Grimace is doing yeah. the like the fat guy like yeah, two step. Yeah, you're you right. Know, the, and and Hamburglar is straight up spin kicking his ass off. Why doesn't Taco Bell have a mascot? They had a I Chihuahua. They had the Chihuahua, yeah, but I guess mascots aren't even really... And then they figured really out, oh, it's, this is racist. This, this is, is actually, super racist, yeah. Um, what about the Burger King Kids Club? <laughs> Dude, the King, the Burger King was a thing for oh, a while. Oh, yeah, the Burger King would beat I'll ass. tell you who Masha's heart is, the Whopper Jr., Lon, Jan Lashley. Ah. <laughs> the Whopper Jr., from the Burger King commercials, briefly was. Really? This is breaking news. This is actual yeah. hard lore. Yeah. The Whopper Jr. from the Burger King commercials was the guy that drove the motorcycle into Sound and Fury and got it shut down. He's been in several things, like on the internet, where I've been like, wait, is that Jan? It's Jan. Like some MacBook thing where they like destroy it? He you know was like a about? successful commercial yeah. actor for a while. Yeah, I saw that. I've seen that before. 
He's, he's the um, we love Jan. Shout out Jan. Uh, this is a great one. Okay. Favorite video game? Okay. Or games? It's pluralized. And what's your Elden Ring build? Uh, my I feel like I I kind of reorganize my top five a lot. Which is that's how it should be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, recently, I mean, God of War twenty eighteen is like so far above. Have any, you started Ragnarok? Cl- I've started Ragnarok. I, for the first five hours or so, I was thinking like, this is kind of more of the same, which is fine because it was a masterpiece. And then they hit you with a moment like five hours in mm. that you go, okay, they're doing mm. something here. I, that's all I, that's all I am, I'm at. That's where I am though. So don't spoil anything. And if you're yeah. listening, um, Persona 5 Royal is way up there. Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> Probably. Hmm. Uh, What's cool about us is we like very different video games. Yeah. Like you and I have a pretty well-rounded sphere of video games. One thing we don't like is sports games, which is fucking dope. I love a wrestling game. Wrestling. I mean, I can't wait for the AEW game. It's going to be great. Um. But I'm like a big like I love to gather and level up skills yeah. and like that's why I like New World. It's so tedious. I ridiculous. like that stuff too. I other love than, other than one very famous thing, which I think is going to come up later. So we'll talk about it. My oh, Elden okay. Ring build. I'm a spell sword, brother. I like this. I like to hack and slash, and I like to become the moon and fly into you and fucking blast your ass. You know. I'm a big uh, like classics like World of Warcraft, Diablo two and three. Um, played it. Played a game called Asheron's Call for anybody who's out there who remembers that game. That's a 90s MMO. Thank you. you. What is the worst mosh injury you have experienced or witnessed? Definitely. I feel like I've witnessed like arms out of sockets and shit. Yeah, I've, I've witnessed several broken legs. Yeah, like bone. One time in Iowa, Harm's Way and Convicted played a show and a dude was going off during another band and broke his, like, spiral fractured his leg. Like, you could see it. It was fucking insane. Wow. And as they were taking him out, and I'm not even joking, he said, oh, man, I'm never going to get to see Convicted. He was right. He was right. Yeah, probably. He's probably very correct. That's not many people saw him. <laughs> very sad for that man. Uh, I've been, I've been uh, like heavily concussed but that's about, i don't think i've ever been knocked out cold but i've been i've been concussed to the point of like not knowing where i am for sure During i've never been concussed that i knew of good for you man that i knew of okay well it's coming whenever All i see right. you next right. yeah um how that's gonna play into so many of the questions like as yeah. edgeman what is your favorite excessive force i mean I only know the one. Yeah, same. Like, like that's like, I forget who said it. It may have been Martin. He was like, everybody really only knows that one. Martin loves, he's like my excessive force friend for sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's just the one weak motherfucker. Fred Grimes or Grimy or Hank Scorpio. Hank Scorpio. Hank Scorpio. <laughs> All the way. Yeah. Grimes was great. I love when he goes and he's like, good Lord, Simpsons, this is a palace. Yeah, the, the, the Frank Grimes meta bit is really just very sad. You know? It is. Yeah. Hank Scorpio is a is a Chad King. Un, get the hell out of yeah, here! Just a genius. <laughs> just unbelievable. Is that a Conan? That has to be a Conan. I think it is actually. It's Conan era for sure, but I don't know if it's a Conan written. I went to um, Benny Hanna with my mom the other night. So f- when you guys hear this, yesterday will have been my birthday. My birthday is Wednesday. Oh my god! This wow. Week. So my mom took me out to dinner. We went to Benihana. When I was a kid, we used to always go to hibachi place. I like loved them, so it's kind of like a nice mm-hmm. tradition to go to Benihana. And um, I, comp- oh, oh, the the Lyft driver on the way there was listening to the Conan podcast, which is like such a weird style to listen to a podcast in a Why Lyft. You're driving people is bonkers for sure. And that, like that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but he's really funny, so I didn't mind. Uh, Ocarina mm-hmm. Time or Majora's Mask? So here's my thing. I'm like anti-Zelda straight up across the board. How come? I don't know. Do you think it gets too much praise? I never, I never got... Of- yeah, I really do. I'm a Mar- I'm Mario guy, to, like, through and through. Mm-hmm. So I, I found... I, I didn't find any charm 
in in Breath of the Wild's like uh kind of monotony. Like the the monotony and the and the like the cutscenes are really minimal and yeah. which I think is some people find charm in that. And I, I just found it really lazy and boring. As a huge Zelda fan, mm-hmm. I didn't like Breath of the Wild. And it's all. and it's like I, I know that we're in the min- minority here and I'm fine yeah. with that. that yeah. It's like yeah. universally beloved and praised and like one of the best games ever. I, I've ne- I've I've in, in terms of Zelda, I just I get about a couple hours into all of them and I go, this is just isn't for me. Yeah. Um, now I'm I would be in the opposite camp. Ocarina of Time is a top five for me for sure. That's the and one I, I finished, I think. Okay. So I'll, I, I mean, have to say that. I feel like you've done your due diligence. You don't need to play Majora's Mask. I've bought them all. That's mm. the thing. I've paid full price for every single one. And I try. Christ. When this fucking Breath of the Wild sequel comes out, I will buy it. Really? I will give it I will give it one more shot. Hmm. Um, I just specifically remember right in the beginning, I've, I think I've told this story before, but you, in the Deku tree, you have to burn a spider web to get through it. Okay. It's like, right, you're still Kid Link. It's like the first dungeon. Mm-hmm. But I, they don't tell you that. There's no hints. You have to figure out that you can light a stick on fire. Which I'm down fire. with that for sure. Because so that's re- some Souls yeah. shit, you know? Yeah, but I remember being like 10 or whatever yeah. and just being like, oh my God. And it's like, rated E for everyone. And, like, and I just, I had to do that. I had to yeah. burn that, which like now is so mundane. But at the time, games were not like that. That's, I mean, that's some revolutionary shit for sure. Of yeah. just being like, hey, figure, go figure this out. Yeah. In an adventure style game is very cool. But, so I would say Ocarina over Majora's Mask. Majora's yeah. Mask is overly complicated for no reason. I would think Ocarina of Time, that's like the, the that would be the, the everybody's answer. For the I think part. so. Yeah. I'm sure there's some, well, actually. Well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if you could recruit one more member into your bands for a one-off album, who would you choose? If you could recruit one more member into your, so if God's hate could have seven people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a, <laughs> um, so the guy, a fellow named Nick Barker. Mm. Played, uh, he was in Demi Borgir and Cradle of Filth. I think he's still in Cradle of Filth. Okay. He he has the chops drum wise to do what I want to do. So like what I'm writing, I'm like, what if I could do that? You know, just like do oh, the really? real crazy oh, shit. Interesting. It interesting. would be I would add him on drums and I'd just play second bass or something. Because <laughs> that way there's no restrictions to like anything that I'm writing. You could do you could be a second vocalist and it would actually work. You yeah. already kind of are, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I don't uh, want to be he's in, you know, he's so monumental in front that I'd look small. I'm a perspective manipulator for him. <laughs> Make him look bigger. It's bullshit. True. Uh I'm going to the airport by myself and it's like grannies are grannies are shaking in their their knickers. I show up with him, I look like a fucking Yeah. He's small he's child. He's huge. Massive. Uh, I don't know. That's a that's a funny question. Maybe like if I could do someone like famous, it would be or like who isn't within our world because there's no restrictions in this question. Yeah, I would probably say like uh, like a young Al from Ministry and just get like weird yeah. <laughs> industrial shit, you know, but like very authentic and real. Yeah. Would you? Tre- would you add Trent Reznor? Would you add me? Sometimes. <laughs> would I add? Would, would I add you to Harm's Way? Is yeah, that what you said? Add, would you add me? Uh, no, you're a bastard, man. Echo. Fair. Don't do the fucking. What is Colin? Damn, I'm so sick of the echo. In Scottish, God the damn name it. Echo means straight. Yeah. Stop. No, yeah, you don't get to redo the bit. No, I don't. You fuck it up. You fuck it up. Which song on Sleep Therapy has the worst lyrics? There are some stinkers on there. There sure are. But keep, please keep in mind, I was okay. Do you remember being 18 years old? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember how fucking stupid you were? I, I'm, yes. <laughs> imagine, imagine you made a piece of art when you were 18 that stuck with you your entire life mm-hmm. and became like a thing that people know you for. Yeah. Like I was the dumbest person alive when I was 18. I don't and think I was people, somehow making art. I don't think um, 
people realize how like vulnerable that is too. Yeah. You're writing lyrics about like real shit Big and you're exactly. trying to make it like artistic. And it's just, it, it didn't land. <laughs> and, uh, that, which is fine, but like that's fucking hard. It and is. And, and you know, scary. a lot of those lyrics have, have stuck with people for a long time and I, and I, I don't want to take anything away from that. You know, people who have them tattooed on them or yeah. affected them in some positive way. Uh, but Insane and Humane is like garbage lyrically, <laughs> you know, and, and it's it's relatable, but it sounds like an 18 year old is just whining about a girl, which is exactly what's happening. Astigmatism is, wouldn't write it today, you know, right? Yeah, right. That, right. And that's basically it was yeah. kind of it was dated very fast. And there we go. What are y'all's go-to TV shows to watch after a gig? I know yours. After a gig? I mean, it's Triple D, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would assume that after a gig means on tour. On tour, yeah. I'm not, like, popping open the iPad to watch fucking right. uh, Battlestar Galactica at the hotel, you know? Yeah. There's something really nice about uh, We tend to put on... Uh, like Pawn Stars will be on there for sure. Love Pawn, Pawn Stars. Love Pawn Stars. Love uh, Forged in Fire. Come on. What is that? That was when they make knives and shit oh, on the show. That sounds awesome. Show's great. It's on the History Channel, believe it or not. That sounds good. I love it. Love a travel channel. Love a Food Network. Love a History Channel. That's dude. Fine. If there's ever like Idiot Abroad or an Anthony Bourdain great. show oh, or yeah. something, <laughs> you know, what? Like, dude, Bourdain would have killed on Hard Lord. Yeah, and he absolutely would have done it. And he would have done it. I, I genuinely believe so. Yeah. By all accounts, Rest just a genuine, just cool, the best guy. Miss him, cool. Yeah, yeah. We, truly, we miss yeah. Anthony Bourdain. Hard he Lord, a, love Anthony Bourdain. What's your? Who's another celebrity that you miss? Who's dead? <laughs> I have one that, like, every time I remember, it hurts. Is it Chris Farley? Fucking Robin Williams. Oh yeah, that's brutal. I'm not even like a huge like fan of. You know what I mean? He's not like my favorite ever or anything. It's just like. Life was better with him around. I mean, he's just like actual scientific proof that depression affects any like anyone and anyone. everyone. And should be taken super seriously. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a disease. Yeah. Um, Chris Farley, I just think, wasn't done. You know, No way was Chris he done. Chris Farley and John Candy, I think, would be like Oscar winners. Or right. fucking the fact that we never got a Chris Farley, Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. Or like, a, like a genuine, dramatic Chris Farley performance that he could for sure do. Yeah, right. He had the chops for sure. Because Tommy imagine, Boy, there's scenes where you're te you're tearing up for the guy. Imagine the Anchorman cast with oh. Chris Chris Farley on it. You know what I mean? Like, and they're all great. I wouldn't want to remove any of them. Yeah. I'm just saying. In addition to, come on. It's just like the parallel between the him and like a John Belushi. Yes, exactly. like even just getting to see them do something together would have been amazing. You know who's hated is fucking Chevy Chase. You know about all that shit? Oh, yeah. Hated. Christopher Columbus just, like, didn't... You good? Christopher or Chris Columbus? Is it, is it, is it not Christopher Columbus, the director? Chris Columbus is, is his name. Well, I know, but... Christopher would be the explorer. That's why he's... But my question is, do Chris. you know what Chris is short for? I want you to take a gun. Aim it at your fucking head. <laughs> and what are some of yours is guys? Wait, albums. hold on. Wait, yeah, Chevy Chase is a total piece of shit. Sorry, I thought my yeah. dogs were freaking out. But uh, yeah, he got in like a fight with Bill Murray just because like actual, yeah, like an actual fist. Fight. Yeah, he's a he's and a like dude. Richard Pryor didn't fuck with him. And like, I'm a big community guy, right? And he was hated on that show he too. Was like he was like a terrorist, but he told my, Danny my, Glover, Donald Glover, Donald, <laughs> fucking racist. <laughs> Donald Glover, he told him that like you're not funny or something, which is just like so provably like a, untrue. Of course, it's not true. There, Dan Harmon talked about how in Community they would kind of stop writing punchlines for for Donald Glover and just say like, and then uh, and then Donald will say something funny, and then he did, and that was like the 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 that was like the big laugh of each scene. Unbelievable. Was them just saying like, eh, and then he'll do something. What are some of yours as guys' albums of 2022? What are your favorite carbs? Wow. Okay, we got a pause right <laughs> holy there. Holy, holy cow! Uh, favorite albums of 2022. 
Goodness. What came what out think, this year? Well, yeah, what came out this year? Um, I I, I really like the Absinthe Father record. Uh, I mean, keep going. I think she wrote all that stuff by herself, and it's it's very impressive. Shit's pretty th- shit rocks. Uh, what else fucking came out this year? I'm in my it's recently added book. Shit. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at too. Um, I'm really bad at listening to new music. I'll yeah, be honest. Too. I'm just like not good at paying attention. I'm not good at keeping up. Oh, I, I mean, I love the Great Iron record, obviously. Um, that came out this year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Batman soundtrack. <laughs> Forty Watt Sun, Perfect Light. Jesus, that came out two years ago. I was like, oh, I like the Choir Boy record. It came out 2022 yeah, or 2020. Uh, um, Taylor's Zeus. Zeus yeah, CD. Zeus is awesome. Yeah, this, sure? that, that thing is great. There's a lot of good stuff. Dead Body's great. Hey, thanks, man. I'm not allowed to say that. You know? Yeah, I got you. Hey. It's, like, ah, it's tough, man. Now, it's, more importantly, it, what are your favorite carbs? Okay. One thing I, mean, I like about you is we have almost an identical palate yeah. with the exception of, of sauces yeah, that's really yeah. it that's our only i mean one. what's better than a french fry now it's pizza, pizza ask, maybe yeah i was gonna say pizza that, that I, mean, I was literally gonna say it's that. pizza but like <laughs> i could probably eat a thing with the fries once a day right i mean and, there there and, is and nothing better than the the walk or the drive home from mcdonald's and just and grab grabbing a little sneaky fry out of there nothing better Nothing oh my god, dude! I went oh. to Mc, I went to McDonald's yesterday. Yeah, the freshest fry I ever had. <laughs> I, when that, that when that happens, I want to turn around and just thank you. you be like so much. You've I done it again. I, I'm not into the whole gimmick of like I, I I tried the like unsalted fry thing so that they have to be dropped fresh. But I don't want to bug them. No. I'll get what I get. You know. <sighs> um. I did a TikTok recently where I it gives you random fast food and you have to list them in order mm-hmm. um, as they come in, so you can't rearrange. Right, uh-huh. the first one was McDonald's. Wow! So of course I put it at number one. Yeah, and I got a lot of flack for it. <laughs> Suck my ass! Yeah, people how, just don't. How don't old are you? It. How old are you turning this year? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. You, which is crazy because I realized that one of my cats is like two, three. So if he lives to be about 18, I'll have him when I'm 50. <laughs> and like that really. That's funny because your TikTok makes me feel like you are 50 now. I'm literally going to delete my account <laughs> live on the I show. say that lovingly and respectfully as your. As oh, your, yeah. No, for sure. That's as one of it. your best friends. Yep. As a man who loves you. Real quick, let me delete this. Don't delete it. Keep it no, up so no, that no, after no, they fine. watch this, they can go they can go scroll it. Everybody check out Bo's TikTok. Dude, Tell me how old you, you are think a he is. Bastard man. Echo. Why? What is Colin? Colin is a bastard man. Thank a you. real low down son of a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's good. I get my just deserve when it's deserved. Unbelievable. You know? and, and it's it's uh, like Bo, I love you, you know? You're my special boy. You're my number one boy. What about it makes me seem old? <laughs> <laughs> All I post is hard lore clips and like that's, three videos that that's I. That's not for me to decide. It's oh my it's God. just a it's just the it's just the the energy I get from you sometimes. You know, unbelievable. You you know what the worst thing is? What you are not the first person to say that about my TikTok. <laughs> So I'm just, I'm, I just, I just like. You just really affirmed an opinion. I just I re-dug a fresh hole fresh in the ground. Like bleeding out right now. Okay. I'm really sorry. What are your favorite, uh, if you had to get someone hooked on your bands, what one song do you play them? Dude, it's been 44 minutes. We've done like eight of 300 questions. Yeah. Well. <laughs> what uh, fucking song, man? So, what, well, um. This is a kind of a weird thing to answer for your own band, you know? Mm. I would say Become a Machine for Harm's Way. Pretty okay. easy. Okay. Okay. 
Dead air. <laughs> it is, man. It's tough. I mean, it's, I don't know what to say. I got so many bands. What to say, you know? Um, Dead, Dead Body, the song Dead Body. Okay. That's the one where I think anybody would be like, yeah, this shit's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, God's Hate. What you, I don't fin know. Finish the job. Let's finish I, the job. Okay. It's, I guess it's finish, finish the job. job. It's funny. There's like three riffs in finish the job. It's the best. It's one, of so them, one of them is... Good, man. Real pushing good. T- pushing tongues uh, probably kill for you, maybe. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, that's a catchy one. That makes sense. It's, a, it's just near and dear to me, you know. As two individuals who have visited a lot, who have visited a lot over the years, what is your favorite food or drink establishment in Louisville? Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I remember asking for recommendations last time. You know what? I like Spinelli's. Really, I like I like playing there, and then you know having a little slice. You know, it's like Casey delivered there for a long mm-hmm. time. She was a delivery person for Spinelli's, mm-hmm. and it's like notorious for being just like terrible pizza. So it's not like <laughs> it's just it's the vibe, you know. Yeah, true. It's also the only place I know there. <laughs> uh, there's a place called Joella's Chicken that is really good. I like that. Every, last yeah. time I was there, I was asking Brian Garris, "Hey man, where do I eat?" I'm in your hood. And he's like Texas Roadhouse, and he's Jets. like fucking <laughs> a chicken play. Hey, you know, my mom makes chicken. And it's really good. <laughs> like, okay, it's really good. it's really good, Brian. Actually, no, he sent me to uh, thank you. He sent me to some diner that would like didn't have seating, so mm. obviously I'm not doing that. So I went to Denny's. Garbage. <laughs> um, Harmsway Dead Body Tour when also mobile shirt when we're we're working on it. Oh God, Why does Colin bully Bo at every second? Tanner, that is a great <laughs> question. It's out of pure love. I'd like I love to analyze guy. that with you, Tanner. Okay. Um, I want to issue... hear your thoughts. Bo, here's the thing. You know firsthand that the meanest things I say to you, I will send to you beforehand and be like, is this too mean? You did not ask me if the TikTok bit was too mean. <laughs> that was a spur of the moment. <laughs> I can cut that if you want. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. There's no cutting. Everyone's going to see what a bastard man you are. You think Everyone I'm... Everyone Okay, will. all right. Everyone My parents were married. I'm not a bastard. Um, a bastard man. It's, it's, I love the guy. You know, I, how boring would this be if we were two guys that just agreed with each other and thought all the same stuff, you know? This wouldn't like, even be like fun fr- to like listen f- to. Like friendship? <laughs> Nobody saying, wants like, that. You want to listen to songs about being happy and love and life? Do you do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> There's not one good song about like g- good vibes, you know? Good Other vibrations. than good vibrations <laughs> by Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Any anecdotes from touring Mexico? Dude, did I played ever? Mexico like once. Oh, really? Yeah. We did a, a Mexican tour in 2018, mm. 19. With Renee, mm-hmm. um, one of the drives was so long that we flew instead, and it was incredible because flights were like forty bucks a piece. Nice. Some of the best food I've ever had. The okay. band got five out of five ill. Like, I almost fainted. I had to go and like lay down at the airport. Coming, so you back got home. you got Montezuma took his revenge. He fuck he got me. And what's crazy is like we were careful, but like. They wash vegetables in the water. They make ice out of the water, you know? And, like, Renee was like, I wouldn't eat there. You guys might get sick. This place should be good. And there's you're just going to. If you're eating. Do you, I mean, when as a resident, do you just become immune to it? or? Yeah. They okay. just have stronger stomachs, which is almost like. So maybe I'd do all right there. Maybe. Um, maybe. No. Forged in iron. <laughs> yeah. Um, we wound up at a AAA show. At the, like, the, yeah, Mexico City, we, like, saw wow. Lucha Libre, and that was really cool. That's awesome. And the tickets were, like, $8, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, really Fair enjoyed nice. it, though. For, I've, I've only played Tijuana. Yeah. And I think it's o- only twice. Uh, it's it's kind of, okay, you know how in Japan you get them dumplings at 7-Eleven, and it's, yeah. like, the best thing you've ever eaten? Yep. Mexico's the same. You can get, like, any taco on any corner. Yep. And you're like, damn, this is this is the best. Yeah, I get we it. We had we ate from a little 
stand behind the venue one night and it was like shocking. Unreal. Like right. I couldn't believe how good yeah. the food was. Yeah. And it's just meat on a tortilla. Yeah, with cheese. Yep. And it was just like perfect. Love it. P- That's love my Mexico. anecdote is that <laughs> I guess Mexican food is really good in Mexico. Hey, Bo and Colin. Hope y'all are doing well. What is y'all each other's favorite moment that solidified y'all's friendship together? And was it mostly through hardcore? What if this person's from like Connecticut? Yeah, right. <laughs> like <laughs> not the South. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, I, I feel like that European tour is where we were. That's like, what did it. This yeah. is, this is inseparable. Yeah. And like, it's with every person too. What's funny yeah. is like, we went through something. We really experienced trauma. We did, but I, I <sighs> you and I, I we, we were kind of kindred spirits from, from moment one. You yeah. know, yeah. I felt something in you, <laughs> like a much older version of myself. Oh you know? my God. <laughs> like a way older version of it, you know physically mentally spiritually <laughs> all around but that's, it, and that's that's the thing it's like that's why we're here you know favorite thing from bucky's dude the what is that them them frosted nuts the almonds oh the almond oh. Those are insane. <laughs> Bonkers. I really like the uh, like the pulled pork or the brisket sandwiches that are like four dollars. I've never made. had a, a Dude, hot meal from Bucky's. Outstanding. Really? Because it's very inexpensive and like they cut it right there. It's like right. it's fucking awesome. I'm normally shitting in Bucky's too long to I hold up, I would hold up the band if I were to do that and a meal. So I'm when I'm mm. getting out, I'm frantically picking up a bag of nuts or something. Um, the saltwater taffy is also really good. Oh. If da- dead body, if dad body and harm's way were going on individual U S headliners, what two to three bands would y'all want to bring out for support? Dead body and headlining over nobody, brother. Mm. We're opening. Um, we're opening for harm's way. Yeah. Honestly, we All would right. t- definitely take out dead body. Cause everybody, nice. everybody in harm's way likes that band. All right. Huge. Um, win. common dead body W <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Fucking the veins too big now. Yeah. Just trying to think of like people we would like to hang out with. Yeah. God's hate who are also too big now. No, well, I don't think so. Well, show wise, nobody wants to follow God's hate, brother. Is that what what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice thing to say. But it's it's true. You know, it's like, uh, you know what it's like? It's like Undertaker Mankind, King of the Ring, Mm -hmm. Stone Cold and Kane had to follow that bad boy. True. In a first blood match, it's not going to work. Who remembered that? You know right, exactly. But exactly. Kane, that was Kane's one, one yeah, single, won, one day world title reign. That's right. Yeah. How are you going to make a guy in a mask bleed? Exactly. Uh, Catfish. This this gentleman is a, a member of the Mister Brotherhood, my former Twitch squad. Yeah. Shares a birthday with me. Wow! Happy birthday, so, Catfish. Happy birthday, Dad. Dad Flesh. Uh, what's a brother got to do to get a friend of the show? Shout out. Real question, what's some of your pre-show rituals? You have a thing. Yeah. You have a la, 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 la. (laughs) Yeah, I got a big warm-up, and Mm -hmm. it's changed a lot over the years, but I do this, like, Tai Chi breathing thing, mostly. That's the big one. People think that, like, warming up the voice is everything, but breathing is, if you can't breathe, you can't sing. So I'll show you all live on the show my Tai Chi breathing technique. So hands start at your side. You inhale through your nose here. And then when you get here, you switch to your mouth. So it goes. And then when you're up here, your your breath is held and you release it by making a like a snake. Like you go, wow. And you do that over and over again until you can do this for like a minute. Wow. Like you go where you're exhaling for a minute from here. And your lungs are just expanding every time. You can fit more and more air in there. Do you hum? Do you do any kind of melodic I do a hum. Stuff? So, so yeah. I did this full. I I did one that was so gnarly that it turned out I was blowing out my voice. I remember. And then Joe from Wisdom and Chains was the one that was like, "I just hum during the band before us," because I saw him watching us. I think. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Do you not warm up?" And he's like, "Yeah, I just hum through your whole set." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I tried that, and it was like night and day. I believe Todd Jones told James that. On our European tour with nails, humming, yeah, just like hum. And James, ha- James is to me very impressively. He like does not lose his voice on tour. 
Yeah. Now, screaming and doing melodic shit are very different. Very different. Very different. And you're like, like we often say, like, I blow my voice talking over the music at a bar or at a show. Like, that's yeah. what kills me. And I, I mean, Sound and Fury, I did too. Mm. But then I sang too. Right. But like one set. And no, by that, yeah. And those yeah. second day videos, I'm toast. Yeah, you can hear it for sure. I'm fried. Uh, Mary Fuck Kill Fast Food. Let's do... It's been one hour. We've done nothing. Well, th what do you think question... What, what is Q&A? I'm just worried. I, I mean, do we do some kind of quality control or do we just do everything? Okay, okay. I mean, we can do so everything. Fuck I don't care. Jacob, I guess. No, no, no. <laughs> Mar 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 Mary Fuck Kill. Kill Subway, Mary and McDonald's fucking and out. Wow. Uh, ask Hardler, when might we see Harm's Way take Dead Body on the Road? Would <laughs> love the to. third one. Would love to. Yeah. Who's on the Food Network? Here we go. We talked about this one earlier. Uh, Food Network host Mount Rushmore. Okay. It's big. This is this is so easy too. You go first. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Alton. Yeah. Martha. Wow. And Here's my toss-up. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not as easy as I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Flay, maybe? Ooh, Super Chef Bobby Flay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mine's different, so that's good. It's going to be Alton, though. He's on there for sure. Alton's goaded. Um, going to have Bobby. He's the he's the mayor. What are you going to do? Yeah. You know, if it hair lips, the governor. Right. Um, I would have, I'm a big chopped guy. I so love even, chops. so it's going to be Amanda Freitag. Cause I think mm. she's great. And then number one, Chris Santos for the Santos. For the, number one, dude, I got to put a young blood in there. Wow. The, the, he's an actual metalhead. Did came he ever, and saw did he, ever, Har did he, ever he came and saw harm's way play at fucking St. Vitus. Did he ever respond to you? No, no. no. Okay. He's a busy man. Chris Santos. They are number, number two. They are filming. Oh, okay. So, like, they legitimately busy. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best venue you guys played and attended? The best venue? They're all going to be in Europe. There are some European venues that are, like, we're playing here? Mm. That are, like, so fancy in their showers and, you know, like, the Netherlands. Like, we played Dynamo. Mm. It's like the are we night talking or quality of, like, the amenities? Or are we talking, like, oh, we're playing here. It's going to be sick. Ah. Yeah. Because if so, know. then it's Gilman. That's very true. If it's if it's worst we're amenities, here, it's gonna be sick, it's Gilman. <laughs> worst, worst amenities, amenities but the show shows. is so good that you don't you're you're, you're shooting in the hoop while yeah. you're setting a merch, you know? Yeah. Uh amenities. On the Ghost Main Tour, we played some like real deal, like nice theaters and shit. Or like mm -hmm. Cannibal, we played like in Vermont. We played like some super fucking nice venue that like every band had a huge green you know just like pro shit that's we, when it's, it's so awesome when you get that when there's like vegetable and meat trays that aren't even part of catering they're just yeah. like there that's the when your rider is there that's yeah, when, when it's, it's like yo and, yeah <laughs> yeah that feels great so never happens yeah it'll be stuff like that for sure but on, honestly as, as much as we shit on Europe and you know obviously oh their venues are unbelievable. Some of the venues are so fancy and the nice. The Budapest one is one where I'm feeling. What is that fucking called? I have no idea. Arena Ween would be so sick if the shows were good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Budapest, I'm so sorry that I'm for blanking on the name, but like, and that when I roll awesome. up to there, I feel like a king. Yeah, an actual king. Um. What's your favorite venue right after it? That's interesting. Did Bo Luder, spelled wrong, have sexual relations with a fish? No. Well, Luder, spelled wrong, may have. I don't he know. He might have. Can't vouch for him. Also, shout out KFC Biscuits. KFC got rid of the bowls, and that really bums me out. The famous bowl? Yeah. That can't be true. 100%. That's like their, that's their Big Mac at this point. Hence my confusion. That seems crazy. Any stories from shows in Lawrence, Kansas? What? You never played Lawrence? I feel like we have, but stories from Lawrence. Hard lore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Famous Bowl's still there. Lore. I'm just an idiot. Yeah, you're God. I knew you were fucking out of your Take shit. Take a look yeah. at that. Oh. 
They we did never, something. We never talk about the famous pool. It's amazing. We never do, and it's so good. So it's good. so fucking good. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence, Kansas on Ghost Main. We played there on Halloween, and it was just like chaotic and awesome. Where the played f- there on Every Time I Die, also same venue. Chaotic and awesome. Big fan of Lawrence. Big fan. I'm going to Google Twitching Tongues, Lawrence, Kansas. The la- on the Ghost Main tour, it was Halloween, and so all the kids were like out around this town trick-or-treating. Everyone's in costume. It felt like a movie. Mm-hmm. There's like a toy store across the street from the uh, venue, and the dude was dressed like David Pumpkins. <laughs> I bought a Misfits figurine. It was just good memory. Okay, good. we played there with Co- <laughs> Code Orange and Vane, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. It ain't. It's not ringing a bell. What's the Which, name of the venue? Something. The Baltimore? Granada. Granada. Hmm. It's, it's. You know. I'm sorry, but. Yeah. Yeah, my memory's not what it used to be. One of the first tours we ever did, this is some some heart lore, okay? Mm. One of the first tours we ever did playing Lawrence, Kansas, is when I found out a girlfriend of mine at the time, this is fucking 15 years ago, this is forever ago, Mm -hmm. a girlfriend of mine at the time who I was moving in with at the end of the tour cheated on me. So Lawrence is always up there. So you'll, okay, that's, so you have that moment. (laughs) <laughs> At least I have that banked away. I have a I have a moment like that that's I think in like like I think Birmingham, Alabama actually. You have a little heart lore? Yeah, I got some heart lore. I'm not gonna tell it though. Okay. So Favorite like, piece of merch, merch design. One of your own, but also one from another band. That's a good question. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Um what's your favorite piece of merch that you own? In general? Yeah, just any any band. I have a I have a Slatanic Veramox shirt mm. that you know what's crazy is I found out there's another one, but mine says, you know, TM Slayer 1987, which is when I was born. There's one that I've seen for like $1,000 on eBay that is my birthday, 1987, oh, wow. like November 16th, 1987. That's really cool. In like a 2X, like it would fit. Everything about it would be perfect wow. if I could afford it. The the Typo Wolf Moon shirt is probably my, my just straight up favorite shirt. Casey got me one for my birthday a few years ago. From fucking Team Prozac, of course. The homie, dude. <laughs> he must have worked for... Yeah, I for, don't know. For he, Blue yeah, Grape or I something, right? Something like that. He's something. got everything. Yeah, um, yeah. that's that's like my favorite shirt. Shirt. Yeah. Personally, uh... uh trying to think. The I mean, the God Say Be, the like, Life is Hard, Be Harder shirt, for, for me, felt like... An achievement, just like yeah. kind of working our way through that one until until it was what it was. It's and a then, perfect shirt. Thanks, man. And then it sold really well. And that's what's better than that. N- literally, I mean, you're metrically proving that it's a good design. Yeah. You know, pretty much. Um, I also really like the Let God Sort Him Out shirt. Yeah, that's a good one. That's or, a, I'm Alec, sorry, Let God Sort Him Out. You know, Alec Faber OG. Amazing shirt. My only beef with the Life is Hard Be Harder shirt is it's printed on, you know, how there's like two kinds of black comfort colors? One stays and then one fades. So I have two of them. I have I have a one that I cut the sleeves off and one that I kept. And one is one is one is the other. Yeah. yeah. So I have like a provable difference. In yeah. There is a hundred percent difference. Yeah. Those bastards. Big time. Um for harm's way, I really like we I mean we really it's it's a very I don't want to say like standard design or anything, but it, we've done it so many times, but just the harm's way, shy ill or post human. Arch the design, fall. the rise and fall, Ghent Bell thing is just so like they, very, they know that you were just like hey yeah. Guys, we we told this them, is we, ours now. We asked them. That's like a it's yours that's now. That's the thing though. And and like you'll see it anywhere. You Johnny like, cashed them. You know that's yeah. your that's your hurt. Do you know the um the Lars Ulrich? That's mine now. Story. No. Okay. I may be getting parts of this wrong, but I believe it was Baroness opened for Metallica or toured okay. with Metallica or something. And they would do a thing where they would put water on the drums and with lights and they hit it during certain parts and it would like, and it would look cool. And one night (laughs) Metallica's playing and I guess their side stage, I think it's Baroness. I could be wrong. Regard. It doesn't matter. A band who is like opening for Metallica. Lars is, is, is like, they're playing and he's like, looking side stage and like seeing the, the drummer. And he like tells his drum tech, like, Hey, put some, put some water on my toms and they like do the gimmick and like on the symbols or whatever he like does it. And then like after that song runs over to the band and goes, 
that's mine now. And then runs back. Wow. Just continues on with it. But like just being a little stinker. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I don't think he. No. No one gives a shit. But like that's mine now is always. That's, that's always funny to me. That's good stuff. I feel that a lot when I'm listening to music. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good well, riff. I that's love, mine now. It's my favorite riff I've ever written. It's a shame that that's got stolen from you just now. Twitching Tongues God Say Dead Body Tour when? No. <laughs> Never. Colin would simply die. die. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't vocally do that. No way. Um, Dave asked, "Who is y'all's go-to character in Mario Kart?" Which is Yoshi. a great question. Yoshi. Yoshi. I know you're going to call me a piece of shit. Wario. Mario. Oh, a very balanced. Uh, that's why I like him. He's Here's my heavy thing. enough, fast enough. Here's my thing, Bo. What? I'm I'm undefeated at Mario Kart. Uh, other I, than, I other than one person. Who's the one? Martin Stewart. Martin. Yeah, that's what I thought. I would not even challenge. I love Mario Kart. Love it. I, I can I can fucking uh, drift, you know, and get the drift boost. I'm good. I, I like I'm there, but I wouldn't challenge. I'm not confident enough. There is not other than Martin. <laughs> like of of my peers. I, I'm, never mind. What? <laughs> no, you, I'm, you can't fucking touch me. Yeah, okay, you can't catch me. That's the thing. What's your guys Sonic order? Does it not or does Fuck it does Sonic. not include upgrade? Yeah, Rod forty four sizes or is Hardlore not a fan? Hardlore is not a fan of Sonic. Hardlore don't rock with Sonic. That's gonna be. I would only choose it over Subway. You know, like yes, bottom of the barrel. And even then, I'm, I'm getting like cheesecake bites. Like oh, I'm, I'm getting, getting mozzarella sticks and yeah, and yeah. like curly fries and a big like apple slushy. Yeah, maybe. exactly. You I'm know? not. I'm not getting like, a burger. A meal. Who would you cast for the Alan Parsons project of Hardcore? Which producer, songwriter, and what musicians to work both in the studio and on tour? That's interesting. You would be a producer, I would choose. Genuinely. What I think is the Alan Parsons project? Um, like a, a big, like a super group oh. kind of deal. You pick me? I would pick you as a producer for sure. Genuinely, I think, I think I, you're a person who can like hear a thing and go... This is good. Do it this way. This this would be better. That's like my that's my number one expertise in this life. I would say. Yeah. Is hearing um, a thing and go. It would, you know, would really work. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and not this isn't even tooting my band's own horn. Nick can write at a level. He can produce ideas at a level that I genuinely don't understand. Mm. Like, hmm, this part doesn't even this part that goes this way we're not really feeling okay how about this totally different thing mm -hmm. like i just don't it's amazing it's amazing to me so nick would be involved in my alan parsons project for sure um musicians if it's hardcore doesn't even fucking matter brother mm -hmm. does it do it but yeah, i'd pick you you'd be in hey, there thanks man you could uh maybe maybe rhythm guitar you know Bass, I can play. I bet you one rock I bass. Do, I, I, I don't like playing bass. I play bass for You Casey don't like he, playing bass? He had COVID uh, when we did the Stick to Your Guns Yeah, I was there. Shows? Yeah, and I played bass, and I did not like it at all. If I can't chug, hands built Just, for chugging. Dude, Pete, Pete chugged. Blah. Pete palm muting bass, one of the dopest fucking things ever. Mm. Favorite guitars you toured with? I wonder if that's guitars or guitarists. Fan or not, another Mr. Brother. Um, I love my Ibanez list, Paul. Did you tour with your steel guitar? The steel guitar. Yeah, that's the only one I ever I did anything with. Yeah, that makes my, sense. My, my one of one steel guitar. What's the best, worst piece of merch from your friend's bands? <laughs> that's your a very funny or your friend's question. bands? Yeah. I could definitely say that there's some Weekend Nachos merch that is Fucking insane. I mean, they all, uh, every Weekend Nachos shirt says Weekend Nachos on it. So it's like, the actually, the one they did with, like, actual nachos on it yeah, was incredible. Do you know that there's a five-inch that's a nacho? That's a nacho, that's a, yeah. That's, that's, a that's incredible. It's incredible. That's yeah. amazing. Um, there's a Twitching Tongue, I mean, I, I've brought this up many times. There's a Twitching Tongue shirt where the back says Eyes Adjust in the Angry Birds font. That's right. Like yeah. the font that is like only known as being from Angry Birds <laughs> and this one I suggest shirt. And it's the worst shit ever. Have you all ever been to cookout? Of course. Yeah. 
If so, what is your complete tray milkshake drink order? We have talked about that, but the only thing I can ever remember is Alex. <laughs> <laughs> corn dog order. That's the only, yeah. That, okay, yeah. I haven't been enough to give a good opinion on corn I go dog. double burger, corn dog, fries for the first tray. Second tray, I go t- double burger, corn dog, fries. <laughs> uh, I like, I think, I think there's like a caramel shake that I really mm. like. Mm. I genuinely think we've only been as a band one time, so I don't. It's just not enough. Oh, I love it. The aggregate so is not strong enough. Sure. Yeah. Tell us the time you got punished versus times where you were the punisher. That's a, a great question. Have you ever punished somebody? One hundred percent, dude. Uh, without, I won't say like I don't want to embarrass anybody, but one time when I was getting food with Brody, people were walking by that I wanted to like wrestlers that were walking by as we were waiting that I wanted to talk to you so bad. But what do you even say? That's the thing. Well, that's like, why I moments, just didn't. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, there's a lot of times where I'm, you're mingling with Lemmy at a fest or something. Right. Yeah. We've talked about that. And it's like, how do I, and I think, you know, doing more like actual interviews with people for not fest yeah. has kind of desensitized me to them. Yeah. And I th- and when I'm talking to people, I think I can feel that they think I'm like a job or punisher until like halfway through the conversation. Yes. There's a moment also, where you can visually see it click. I also think that like I would never per- this is me personally. I-, I don't mind if somebody comes up and is like, hey, I like the podcast. Hey, I really like your band. Oh, it's, or, it's amazing. Or, or or like better yet, my favorite thing is like, what pedals are you using? Mm. I could talk gear all day. That's yeah, one I thing. Ta- that, like, I could talk it in no day. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one thing for anybody listening. If you want to talk about gear or amps or guitar, like, I love that shit. Don't hit me up. Um, don't hit up Colin. Hit up Ballin. Yeah, but <laughs> one thing um, that I would never do is, like, go up to a, a wrestler or another person and be like, you did really good. It was a really good match. You wouldn't say great match? No, I wouldn't oh, do I've that. I've done that. I've done that for sure. Maybe just like in a, in a quick passing, but I would yeah. much sooner like it, like the Lemmy and catering kind of thing. If if there yeah. was like some situation, I would much rather talk about the potatoes we're about to eat. Yeah, Be like oh man. But then there's I'll, some extent I'll where grab- maybe they'll think like, yo, were you not watching that just now? You know. Yeah, but but if that's the case, then fuck them. I don't want them. I want them. You know I, what I mean? I, I understand that. You know. Yeah. But how many how many times have you had somebody tell you great set when you know it wasn't a good set? Oh, there's. Almost so nothing more offensive in this world. So like I like that. And I'm like, you're a fucking liar. Piece yeah, of shit. Yeah. So like, I don't want to blow smoke, you know? Yeah. I kind of feel that way. I gen- <laughs> I like, <laughs> there's been times where I've like gone around bringing up the set when I watch somebody who had maybe a, not a great set and they mm-hmm. know it and I'm talking to them about something else. I won't even bring it up. Just go around it. They don't need to hear about it. Um, talk to the Cannibal Corpse guys about Ace Ventura. It's probably the most punishing thing I've done on the last day of the. And tour it, but it's like, who doesn't want to know that? Yeah, you know? I mean, come on. And and we we're talking to Alex, and he was like, cool as fuck. And he was just like, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> like that was it. It was like you know, very short. Kind of talking, guy. talking. Like I'm a I'm a dying fetus, like super fan. Mm. Like I genuinely believe they're one of the best bands to ever play music. Mm. Uh. So touring with them and just be, be like having normal conversations with them was it's very hard not to punish them. Just at like talking to somebody who I would genuinely think is like a like a group of geniuses. Yeah, I can was, see that. It's kind of tough to do to just kind of and then him. There's some lore there that I I don't want to div- I don't want to div- I don't want to put him on the spot. Yeah, yeah, I understand. What if you don't say who? It's hard not to know at this point. Yeah, fair enough. Then essentially a band. <laughs> when I heard them, it was like this sounds like a twitching tongue sport. And I was mm. honored. Mm. And they borderline confirmed it to me. Mm. In a way that were that was like only complimentary. Excellent. You know? Yeah. Very good. So that was nice. What are some cool places you've gotten in for free by saying you're a band on tour? Back in 2006, we got to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with only a routing on, on someone's Same. sidekick. Yeah. Free or discounted Cracker Barrel used to be a thing, too. Definitely remember that. Um, 
Honestly, a second time bringing him up, but we, Chris Santos was lucky or kind enough. I should say we were lucky enough to invite us to his Chris restaurant. Chris Santos in, was lucky enough to have arms. Yeah, play yeah. To invite us to his restaurant in, in Beauty in Essex in Las Vegas. And I've never had a better meal. It was fucking amazing. Very nice. That was really, really cool. Colin, yeah. is your dream venue an outdoor show in the Century City Mall Commons area? I love the Century City Mall. <laughs> Oh, my God. Probably. And if so, what's the lineup? What's the lineup? Uh, at the Century City Mall? I'm Here's the thing. I'm not moshing at the Century City Mall. So I want to see, like, like, like ABBA headlines. <laughs> Toto Direct. Paula Abdul, 2 of 4. And... Uh, uh, Paula Abdul... Dude. And and the Jabberwockies open. <laughs> Dude, straight up now tell me. Mm-hmm. Every line that she finishes, it goes she just like, Oh, are you just winning time? Yeah. Every every line does that. Are you dissing Paul Abdul? That song is really bad. That song she is like, incredible. She like, she like raps. You realize she's a, a Van Nuys OG, right? There's just too many at this point. Straight up now, tell me that you really want to love me forever. Uh, meow, meow, meow. Who would your dream Bastards. interviews be? Honestly, Bourdain yeah. would be great. We have Bourdain, some that I don't Danzig. want to spoil that are still on the horizon that I'm really excited for. Danzig um, for me. Hetfield. Hetfield and Danzig. Those are the big two. Big two. <laughs> Was there ever a time you guys thought about giving up on a career in music? What yes. happened? How did you decide to keep going? Dude. Yes. This I've done Chris it. I've Fitz. given up many times. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, there was a point in time over COVID where I had my first IT job that was fucking miserable. And my like band wasn't doing anything. Personal life was falling apart. And I was living like the most paycheck to paycheck I've ever lived. Like getting by with dollars in the account every week. And that was like, oh, I guess... Like, this is life now, and this is what happens when you don't go to college, but, yeah. you know, like, I thought it was done. Thank Christ, that's not the... Uh, at, when Disharmony came out, it was definitely, like, we did that one tour with you guys, mm-hmm. and then uh, did a, went to Europe, and then I got, like, an engineer job and did mm-hmm. it for, like, a year. It was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not playing music. Uh, I'll, like, and, and it honestly really helped me. Stop like not looking at music as a career for yeah. one or two years. Yeah. Brought the creative joy back that went into something like the God Say record, you know? I love that. Or it's like I'm not writing this to for any other goal other than to make something that I want to hear. Thank you, Chris. Rank soda formats, can bottle, fountain, glass bottle, let's say. Glass bottle, number one. I, I think that's a gimmick. I don't buy into that. You're not beating a can. Here's, here's what I'll say. Did you hear that? What the fuck was that? Someone, I think, just followed me on Twitch and it played, but I don't know why. You're scum. Holy what was your fucking browser? You fuck, that back? scared me. I don't have anything <laughs> that open. Was That's insane. What, that was insane. Uh, glass bottle Coke specifically is like the most concentrated, purest form of soda known to man. But still, I'll probably go can. I I'm, I'm think I'm can over everything. Over everything. Yeah, I, I genuinely think there's something about the aluminum or tin or whatever's in it that keeps it colder, keeps it more carbonated. It's the perfect amount to finish with a meal. Like, it's perfect. I love an ice cold Diet Coke. Diet Coke or Coke Zero in a can <sighs> is truly, there's nothing better. The only thing better is when it's got the polar bear on it because it's Christmas time. Oh, my dude. Then <laughs> when them polar bears come out. <sighs> Uh, they're coming any day now. Yeah, any day this now. This next the, episode, we're going to have polar bears on. <laughs> One of the best things was, for those of you who don't know, is oftentimes when you fly to Europe, you have European Coke, yeah. which isn't the same as ours. Right. For better or for worse, it tastes different. I guarantee you I could pick it in a lineup because it's high fructose corn syrup versus not. Right. Give me the HF mm-hmm. syrup. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're coming back, mm. you oftentimes get the American shit. Mm-hmm. One time coming back from a, a European tour, we had polar bears on the fucking <sighs> American Coke cans. How good if, did that feel? Oh, my. 
Outstanding. Oh, God. <laughs> I cannot wait to sip them, sip on them polar bears, man. Yeah. Next um, question. what are some dream? Oh, and then so I would go can, glass, uh, 20 ounce bottle, fountain, plastic no, bottle, fountain, list, right? fountain over the 20 ounce, two liters at the bottom. Two, two liters, liters are garbage, useless. man. Useless. And I used to like exclusively drink those. Trash. Because oh. dad orders them with the pizza and that's all yeah. you have, you know? Yeah. And they were fucking terrible. What are some dream collaborations for your respective projects? Can be someone not in the hardcore music scene. Colin can use God's hate or whatever he prefers. Collaboration. We've kind of done it with Harm's Way. Um, the the post human remix album. Chris did a really good job of kind of rounding up. I mean, we had Justin Broderick and Igor. Yeah, that's cool. That's fucking dope. You know? I would love for some. There's the new wave track on. Uh, is it? Is it on Disharmony? Arrival? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to hear a fucking club banger remix of that That'd song. be really fun. Hit me with like a fucking... Uh, who's the guy that said the shout out to his family thing about George Floyd? <laughs> David Guetta? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have yeah. David Guetta do the, the fucking <laughs> Arrival club mix. That video is one of the most insane things uh, to ever Unbelievable. Happen. Shout out to his family. Yeah. Unreal. You know what's funny is my my train of thought right now is him to Ellie Goulding because of Give the lights up, baby. Lights up. Ama- amazing song. Cause that's like an ultimate club song in my brain. But then she has a song called Easy Lover. So they made me think of the Phil Collins song that I heard today. Mm. And that is a great song. You're so crazy. <laughs> Top three office episodes, excluding excluding dinner party dinner and party. stress relief. Okay, so Survivor Man is Survivor Man my number one. Number one, dinner party is like like even with dinner party factored in, it's number one. Number two, uh, not for me, but I possibly understand. Phyllis's wedding. Ooh, you found it, Uncle Al. Yeah, he's the, weird. The the welding line. Is, oh, two is metals. Truly, truly one of the most brilliant like comedic bits ever written, because it's so it's just so fast, and not acknowledged like nobody yeah, acknowledges yeah. that it's even a joke yeah um i'm ravenous after a night of love making <laughs> the, uh, that's uh, a oh wait is that pam and jim that's, that's pam, pam and jim, jim. excuse Phyllis's me Phyllis's wedding me. is the yeah. is uh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know uh what the else celtics were a great team <laughs> dude <laughs> <laughs> uh i really like i love the tallahassee arc you don't, you're not saying those are your top three, though. No, no, no. But I'm. Okay. I, I will say that like f- a fondness is like, like so smug, like like that shit yeah. when when he's fucking with Dwight. Like I just I think those are really fun episodes. Gabe became yeah. a good character in the GSL, yeah. dude. Gabriel what's Susan it, Lewis. What's in it for GSL? <laughs> That's oh, hilarious. Yeah. Um, top, number three. What's my third favorite episode? Season four for sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's the strongest. Oh, the deposition. Oh my god. Come on. I really have to go he, to the bathroom. He, yeah. <laughs> oh dire. Yeah. That was stalling. What is it? Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Great. You know, it's it's a funny <clears throat> thing, Colin, is is I think you and I were champions for this, and then it became cool to hate on the office, you know? Did. And that's fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. It's like I don't a, think it's the, the whole like the office liking the office is not a personality trait. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no shit. It's a great show. It's just a really good show. Yeah, and it is it is the most streamed thing, like ever. Really? So I'm sure. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it's just the, just a natural. It's ratio. just everywhere, and that's yeah. the. Of course, you're gonna be a. Aver- there's gonna be some aversion to that. You know. Dream show lineup: opening band, middle band, headliner. Um, that I could attend, and honestly, it was certainly within the realm of possibilities, was like Metallica, Danzig, Faith No More. Like, those, those tours That's basically happened. Show. Yeah. And it like, you know. One of the coolest things ever, like an actual super group, minus Lars playing drums, is Metallica playing London Dungeon with Glenn singing. That's in Chicago, the, the only video you can find of it. It's at the Rosemont Horizon. And you have Hetfield doing the wow, like in the background during like London Dungeon, like mm-hmm. come the fuck up. That's I mean, that's hard to beat those three as a yeah. as a decision. and like 
that's a tour that could have definitely happened. Yeah. But then you'll see those those shows that it's like typo Godflesh dancing, and like Celtic Frost, yeah, or like, something. Yeah, Some like the, the Monotheist tour was with typo. Like what? The that's fuck insane. And I did, I just missed that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I I regrettably got into typo and honestly even Pantera. I thought Pantera was like stoner shit, so I wasn't into it. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty common, though. I mean, yeah. like, it, there was a certain period where only pieces of shit listened to Pantera, you know? Right. So you, so you meet a guy, and you're like, this guy's a piece of shit, and he's wearing a Pantera shirt. So Yeah, and there were other bands, too, like Iced Earth, where it's just like, never heard an Iced Earth song it's ever, never but I never saw will. the people wearing those shirts, and I was I was good. The, the fake Heshers at my school loved Iced Earth. Yeah. So to this day, I'm, to this day, I'm, I'm, te- I'm fuck them. See, we're caught up. Are we're we caught up? Swe- yeah, we're just sweating the time. Now we can do Instagram. We're All fine. right, we're going to Instagram now. Yeah, but hold on. I was like, oh. Let's do this. Oh, Big Bo's back. All right, I'm just going to be reading these. They're, I'm going to go from the, from the. Uh, these are top comments. So this is, uh, this is not in chronological order. This is just what I'm getting. I purposefully did not read like anything because I wanted to be surprised. The only thing I read was the Food Network Mount Rushmore thing. Uh, Zach Wolf asks, what podcast do you all listen to? Do you have time to listen to podcasts anymore? No. I, I fall asleep to Hardcore History, like, every night. But that's just because he has a very monotonous voice, and he's talking about Caesar, and I can just... I really only go out of my way to listen to the Kevin Nash podcast now. Dude, click this? Yeah. 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 But even that, I'm watching clips on YouTube. I don't even listen to the whole thing. So what it'll ha- what'll happen with me is I'll be watching a Watch Mojo or something. Yes, and it'll yeah. it'll and it'll autoplay because it knows I listen to them, and I'll be it'll like, eh, I might as well leave it on, yeah. and then three hours go by. I used to, I mean, you know, full disclosure, and I don't really give a shit. I used to listen to Joe Rogan. I used to listen to like other podcasts within that world, and then like obviously as he got a little more out of touch with reality and like how I feel about things, like I, I don't I don't listen to any of that anymore. But and we're talking. Four I mean, COVID five years in general now. just wrecked humanity. Yeah. Overall, and it's. Um, I just don't have time. I wish I. Did, I don't man. have time. There's Doing there's a podcast of some of uh, friends of friends of mine, friends of the show called Quite Unusual, and they they do really good, um, like in depth researched, like hauntings, UFO shit, cryptid shit. And you listen to that? It's very well done. They do have a believe- very good dynamic. It's two do you gals. Believe them? No, of course not. But they they do cool stuff about you. I love like ancient ancient aliens kind of they, stuff. Like they've I, I offered to take us ghost hunting. Yes, Should and we they're take very them up good. On that? Well, I would love to. They're located here. Also, there's some road warriors. You know, oh. they're very very cool. So that I I, I do listen to their episodes as they come out. It's probably the only one. There you go. Yeah. Um. Oh, somebody says, I'd like to ask, I'd like to hear you guys ask guests what they're currently listening to. Make it a that's, recurring question. That's a good idea. What are you currently listening to? Me? Uh, choir boy. <laughs> no, I dude, I don't, I'm very bad at listening to stuff. Yeah, but what are you listening to? Like today I listen to Phil Collins all day because of the one, I heard the one song, Getting Coffee. And I was like, oh, you know what? Phil's got some fucking hits and he really does. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, mean, I'm a big time Phil Collins, Genesis, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Big. I I think so. I mean, In Your Eyes is one of my favorite songs ever. Mm-hmm. So is one of my favorite records ever. And Sledgehammer is like unreal. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm a big Phil Phil Collins guy. Big time. Say no more. I've been listening to. Uh, what are you listening? Yeah, what are you listening to? Uh Dying fetus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny too? Is like, I listen some, to the same eight things. That's the, when I'm like, man, I want to listen to something heavy while I'm like mopping the floors. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'm gonna listen to Hate Breed. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to Master Killer. Like, yeah, it's just it's just I like what I like. You know, I like what I, I like. want to like new stuff. Yeah, I do try, and I a lot of times I succeed. I listen to everything that I see people post about. You do. Everything I'll because okay. like oftentimes because now I do both Apple Music and Spotify mm. because of the show. Of so now when people post the link of the Spotify, I'll just like, all right, let's hear it. And oh, I, I I forgot to bring this up in new things that came out this year, but I love the Tribal Gaze LP. That's right. That did come it. out this year. I like that, too. 
So shout out to Travel Gaze. I'm listening to that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> worst Punisher story. Do you have a worst Punisher story? I don't want to be mean. Yeah. You know? I told the story about the, the German guy who threw the shirt back at me. Yeah, that's good. And that was that was really I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story. Okay. But it's it's out of love because And and Zombie Bait, if you're listening to this, that's his name. <laughs> I want you to know, you punish your way into my heart. That's how. Oh, I interesting. Oh, dude. Okay. You yeah, have people do, who punish their way one. into your heart. Yeah, I do have one. That's he's for sure listening. So Zombie Bait was was just a guy who was there and like would like bring us shirts and stuff. And to the extent where we were like, man, who is this guy? Where the, mm. this is the first guy we we dealt with where he was like a reoccurring guy. Yeah. And then eventually it got to the point where I was like, yo, if zombie bait's coming, we're good. You know, we don't have to worry. It's going to be a great show. So zombie bait, if you're listening, <laughs> you punish your way into my heart. And I, I don't have a bad Punisher story because you're, you're not a Punisher anymore. You're my, you're my, you're my guy. Okay. Mine is my friend Ty, who you met at Furnace I did Fest. meet Ty. So he's the kind of guy who can just kind of, and it, it not even punishing has such a stigma to him. So I don't really mean it that way, but he would just kind of be around. He would like hang out on my streams when I was streaming a lot um, and come to shows and stuff. And we had met, but I did just never really put it together. And then we slowly became friends and now we'll like talk all the time, go to wrestling together right. every time. Cause he comes yeah, up that's, north and that's, that's huge. huge. Um, but he's the kind of guy it's fitting you know him, Colin, as the guy who can kind of get himself wherever. He's a shit motherfucker, man. It's crazy. Because he's just like clever. He's a magician. And he, and he found his way into here. Yeah. He found his way into here. This is a crazy question. Okay. <laughs> Top five albums of all time. I, I almost don't even think it's possible. Is that easy for you? Like, is that. I mean, I can, I can for sure name <laughs> things that come Master to mind. Master Puppets. Ride the Lightning, <laughs> Black Album. I would put Master Puppets in the top five. So Black I, Album is not in your top five, so you're uh, no, immediately no. disproving your theory? No, 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 because my theory is that it's the Sonic best. My, I have always said that Master Puppets is the best album, front to back. I don't think that that's true. That's that a hundred, my, my, I've, I, I've said this so many times. Do you think it sounds the best? I say, no, no, no. I say that I literally say that the black album is the sonic best. Yeah, it that means it sounds the best. So what are you saying? Is that what the question is? Sounds the best? No. What is the best? What's Master the best puppets. one? Master Puppets. Then there it's you go. Opinion. You answered your own question. You you ended your own debate. No, I didn't. You bring you what do you mean? Dude, I have literally always said that Ride the Lightning has the best vibe, Master uh -huh. Puppets is the best album, and Justice has the best singles. And the Black Album is the best Sonic experience. Yeah, but what does that mean? Other than it, means it sounds the best. It sounds the best, but it doesn't have the best songs. It's too long. It doesn't have the best production either. You think it's? You think it has the best production? I think Black Album has the best production. Oh, yeah. I think it. I think it like is the reason everything sounds like shit today. Does that make sense? No. Modern metal sounds like shit. Everything's fake. And I think it all goes back to the Black Album. But nothing's fake on the Black I know, album. but everybody's tried to replicate that with samples and stuff. You could say that, but like Pantera sounds like shit. But it's but it's a unique kind of shit uh, that makes it awesome. But that still means that it's bad. I don't, but I think... I, <laughs> Adjacent to well, Refuse is Pantera Refuse. playing Pantera Productions sounds badass. Anybody else trying Pantera Productions sounds like bullshit. Like the, the quarters on the kick or whatever it is. Yeah, I know. That, I don't know if that's real. I tried to do it and it fucked me. My the the quarter flew off the tape and then the tape started sticking to the kick, so my, I couldn't kick the whole set. Oh. That I, Luis was so mad at me. This was like who, in Sweden or something. Oh my god. Uh, who um who tries to sound like Metallica that you can like reference? Who who specifically tr tries to sound like the Black Album that you think? All modern metal production is going back. They go vague, broad. It's not vague or broad. I mean, look at Avenged Sevenfold. Eventually, yeah, that, they they did that was a, never going to sound. They did a black album album. You know, yeah. And it's it's it's. I mean, I'm no diss to to Avenged to the gods. Avenged no, Sevenfold, full, all full diss. But that that never 
but that's not Metallica's problem. You know what I mean? I'm not that's saying it not, is, but I think I think it it started. It's overproduced, is what it is. It literally is. To appeal to a mass audience, which it did, it worked. I definitely think it was produced to appeal to a mass audience. I don't have an argument there. It, it, but there's no argument. To, to, it, could, would you would you say that it, to you, in terms of what you like, sounds better than Master of Puppets? Yes. You're a fucking loser. I love you. <laughs> I, I hate you. There's mids. It sounds great. It's. It sounds amazing. You're you're brainwashed. You're brainwashed I, really, by the Black Album. But I'm really not because I went through my whole like teenage and early 20s of like hating on it and then having like a discovery, you know? Mm -hmm. That's most people aren't born brainwashed, they become brainwashed. <laughs> Fair you enough. just proved my point. <laughs> I mean, I guess I kind of did. It's, it's, no, I, it's just I, I like, I'm, I just don't think you can, you can hear Sad But True when it kicks in and not think like, oh, this sounds fucking perfect. Regardless of the song, if you don't like the song, it's just like thing. I. Th there's a there's a it's there's a kind of perfect that is unpleasant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But man, Cyber True goes so goddamn hard. It's don't so it? fucking it's so good. Great. Yeah. Uh, what do band? This is a great question from. We Pikachu. didn't list any albums, by the way. <laughs> Master Killer is the best album. It's all five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Master Killer, uh, Five Deli Venoms, uh, the Final War demo. Brutality. <laughs> yeah, Brutality. I like that every other song on Brutality starts with just a floor time going. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like every other song, it's crazy. It's awesome. Right. Uh, Fifty Shades of Greg asks, what do bands see the most money from? Merch at shows, online merch, pre-orders, etc.? I want to know how to support bands the most. That is great. It's a great question. It really depends on the level of the band. If it's if, a, if it's an a, like a pre-order on an album on a major label, they aren't seeing jack squat from that. Not not a penny. So those those shirts are generally like the designs they gave the label to recoup the album. Mm -hmm. So pretty so, tough to do. So unless so, there was no budget, yeah. they're never seeing anything from that. So if you go to a, a record label and you see that they have a band shirt, you could kind of figure out where that's going. It's going to the it's but it's recoup so the, that and that's a double edged sword cuz Yes. If if, an, if people buy those enough, the band will start to see royalties. Yes, which is fucking awesome. Then in the end, your royalties bring you luxury. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Um, at a certain level, a band doing a, like a door deal with a show or like getting back end beyond their guarantee oh, are making so much fucking money off the door oh, that, that merch doesn't matter, but merch is most likely going to be incredible anyway. Mm. So it really depends on the level of the band. You know what I mean? Like once the band is start, is, is calculating sales per head. Yeah, they're doing fine, and but under that, like a like a like a God's hate type band, you know, online good, merch, yeah, the goat, right. the goat. yeah, you guys, like that's good. that keeps that keeps the wheels turning. Here's a good way to put it: if you're going to see a headliner, they're making the majority of their money over the tour on the door. If you're going to see, for it's the most the part, pens, though, is like a okay, hardcore band say, though. We could say both then. If they're yeah. headlining, it's both door it's and It's very merch. even, yeah. If you're seeing someone support, they're getting a guarantee, and they they're making the most of their money off of merch. Yeah. So if you're going to see a band who's direct support to a bigger band or something, like a great example, and I have no idea what they're making. I'm just throwing it out there. Dying Wish, Gate Creeper are out with Hatebreed right now. Dying Wish, Gate Creeper, most likely making the majority of their money off of merch, merch sales yes. because of just the structure of tours. Absolutely. So it kind of depends on who you're going to see and how, like how that all factors in. That's a great answer. Thank you. That was that was good shit. I, as a listener, was like, he's spitting <laughs> bars. Um, <laughs> uh, Betrayed by life asks worst venue provided food in Europe. One time, <laughs> had, and I, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Just fucking. Okay. I was gonna say it's episode from thirty, the, Bo. I was gonna say something from the Budapest place. I didn't want to oh, diss yeah. them, Don't but then I remembered something way worse. Okay, in England, legitimate 
just like like spaghetti noodles mm. thrown into a thing with ketchup. Whoa. For for a, a fest for the whole for everyone. Right. And I th- think it was Birmingham. Mm. Not when we played there together. A different time. I'm gonna ask you this, Bo. Yes, sir. Can you think of a more carnivorous group of people than Twitching Tongues God's Hate? No. No, not in this world, right? Are, are there any vegetarians in either band? Mike used to. Mike was right. vegetarian when he was in Twitching Tongues. Right. Other than that, we are full. Other than that, God's God's hate will put some uh, an animal yes. down. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'll fucking skin it myself. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I won't do that. It's disgusting. I do love animals. I just. I would much rather hunt and kill and clean something myself than buy it from the store. If See, I, I don't hunting. like, I think hunting is like kind of ugly, you know? No, I don't think it's, you can't use hunting to feed the whole country. No. But I think the more people who hunt and kill and gather their own food, like that's very for good For things, things that are overpopulated, sure. Sure. But like a, like a bear? Uh, Leave a bear alone. You no. will not see me within a fucking... 100 square miles with a bear. Yeah, but you ever see a pic of a bear and go, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing, but they're, they're yeah. just so scary. They're so they are fucking scary. scary. They're scary. Um, but like hunting deer or like wild pig or whatever deer. can be eaten. Fuck, like, did go, you say pig? See, a pig, or, oh. pig, I want to give up pig, honestly. Really? Because they're, up. you hear that they're like human-like or whatever? Yeah, they're like dogs. They're like smart, yeah. And I, like, don't, I don't think, here's my hottest take ever, maybe. At that rationale, dude, cows are the coolest. I know, I know. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm backwards yeah. here, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's my, what was I going to say? <laughs> Something about pigs. Oh, my hottest Hot, take ever, hottest maybe. Take. I don't yeah. think yeah. bacon is good. Bacon is not good. Bacon is a supplementary meat. I could easily never eat it again. Yeah. It's never missing, but sometimes it's like, oh, that's nice. Sometimes. But like, like a piece of fatty pork and some ramen. Uh, yeah, that's really good. You know, come on. I think I will say this, and this is as a, a former fish fish fucker. <laughs> um, the whole fucking planet could be eating farm raised salmon and farm raised tilapia, and we oh, would do, forever we would do great. It'd be fine. Yeah, we'd do great. I would love to eat just sushi grade salmon every day, five meals a day. Yep. Uh, Mike Q sucks. Two pizza par- two uh, parter pizza oriented questions. What are your top three local spots? Um, at least two calling back to the Taylor Madison episode. What pizza spots could you recommend in New Jersey? This is hilarious. I looked up his town on a, on a map and he was like, there's no good pizza near me. There's no good pizza near him. And there's just, I, I know couldn't find one. True. I know that's not no, true. I found nothing. Oh, by him. No, yes. Oh, I, 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 I like can- looked up his area. I checked all my pizza resources. There's nothing. In New Jersey. There's nothing within, like, he has to cross the bridge into Philly. The most like, populated state. I like know. densely populated state. There's nothing. No, wow. Nothing near him. Wow. It was it was hilarious to me. Uh, my top three local spots. Number one is Secret Pizza. That's what it's actually called. Uh, the, the best thing that my whole pizza bit on Instagram brought me was being friends with the Secret Pizza guy. Because nice. now I can be like, you making pizzas today? Where other people are fighting for slots online. Very nice. And I feel it's like one of the greatest honors of my life. Quite a privilege. For Quite sure. a huge. I, and I, I admit it, I am privileged in that way. <laughs> uh, Apollonia is number two. I don't need to do number third. Just go to one of those. I'll say lose out of respect. Come on. Because I, I respect my elders. Mm-hmm. There's a place near me called Tortorici's that is outstanding tavern. Now that crust. sounds good. Very, very good. Uh, the Tortorici's Way. Colin, get this. It's called the Tortorici's Way. Green pepper, onion, sausage, spicy sauce, well done, thin crust. I'm, yeah, I'm horny as hell. So if you, if you call and you're like, Wet. large Tortorici's Way, they say, got it. It's amazing. Um, Love it. All right, that'll, be, that'll be ready in 30 minutes there. Yeah, yeah. But, and uh, Jets. Love Jets. See, not local to me. Not local there, to me either, really, but still love it. There were a lot of questions about like 
what do you like? What are you excited to eat on tour? And it's it's Jets. It's amazing. There was in 2022, other than <laughs> Sound and Fury, <laughs> I did not play a single city that didn't have a Jets. <laughs> like that was the fucking the criteria that needed to be met. You got a show coming up here too. Wow. The day that this episode was coming up, God Say yeah. is playing in Brooklyn with uh, with Internal Bleeding, King Nine, and Living Weapon. So, fun. so if you're listening to this on the Thursday and you're near Brooklyn, if you're within two hours, you better fucking be there. Or on the on the drive in. <sighs> yeah, come on, beautiful. Pop it it's on. Uh, also, uh, wish me a happy birthday, you fuckers. Yeah, I'm. I can't wait to do that. Um, Thirty five. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no no no. <laughs> oh no no. <laughs> uh, Alessandro Music, friend of the show. Mm. Uh, and thoughts on Nando's. Dude, in the UK, it's like in the UK, it's goat. Yeah, I mean, I've I never know, eaten like, it outside of the UK, but I, I've had the American version, and it's less, and I've had the Australian version too, and it's less like what it is there. But why, like in America, there's no reason to eat that. Well, I was genuinely excited when I saw one open, but it's like more Ethiopian and less just like chicken burgers. It's like, dude, I mean, a, a, a real deal Ethiopian meal. Yeah. Is one of my favorite things ever. There's some other places that I would go to before Nando. So it really, like you yeah, said, I why would you? I'm, if I'm getting a fucking, like the whole Ethiopian experience with the thing, yeah. I'm not going, like, I got to go to Nando's for that. Yeah, right. I'm right, going right, to right. fucking Meals by Gannett. Um, uh, I love okay. Nando's in, in yes. the UK. It's expensive. Peri, peri, garlic, peri. Dude. It's very expensive, but it's, it's 50 very. 50 fucking quid. Yeah, but it's very reliably good and they have Coke. All. Say not a word more. And they have refills. Hello. <laughs> Huge. Great place. Favorite guilty pleasure emo band? Saves the day, probably. Like like later soft saves the day. Yeah, but you're not guilty about liking saves the day at all. No. But you're I mean, like, what's You're like a day pleasure? one OG. True. Yeah. For me, um, I mean, <laughs> it's brand new, right? You have to be, you're guilty if you listen to that. Well, <laughs> yeah, but like. It is, it should not before, be pleasurable anymore. But before his shit came out, everyone liked Brand New. Dude, yeah, I mean, sure. So I mean, M- really, MCR. Was never an MCR guy. At one time, it was like, you, you listen to MCR. Mm. But now, they're, they draw more people than Kiss, so. But man, I, I could get you into MCR. Dude, Casey was a huge, like. An OG. Yeah, but I one. wasn't a fan. And then became one as an adult, you know? I just, I don't, oh, Taking Back Sunday is probably my answer, actually. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good, like, I, I hear fucking, your lips to Chris Cole, or I'm fucking, I'm in. Aren't they, I don't want to, I mean, they might be on the show at some point, but like, are they not notoriously like the worst live band to ever exist? That's, Taking Back Sunday? I've certainly heard that. Isn't that their gimmick? Yeah. I've Dude, never the, seen him. The record after that, Louder Now, mm-hmm. Bad Rocks. What's it feel like to be a ghost? Uh, Gavin M2347, bands you never caught and will always regret missing. Typo, Pantera. Yeah, I'll, I'll never I'll get just, to see Typo. I won't see the fucking Zach Wild shit if that happens. Um, we, I mean, we might if we're, if we're sent out to a knot fest where... I will... I will not. I'll be watching every motherfucking second of that thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, if I could be there and be paid to be there, fine. But, like, I'm not going out of my way. I'll put it that way. I got you. Uh, you my, my answer for this was Dying Breed. Oh. And then I got to see Dying Breed, baby. So I I truly have no... I did, I've did. i gotten to see Bolt Thrower. Yeah. I've still Same. never seen Carcass. I would like to see Carcass. My, um, my 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 big my list for that was like Bolt Thrower, King Diamond, Dying Breed, and I got to see all three in a few years span, and they were like the three best sets I've ever seen. We played with Godflesh. That was that's a big badass. Yeah, that was cool. fucking sick. So yeah, I'm pretty. Oh, dude, uh, like Sepultura with the Cavaleras with Andreas, if possible. Oh my god, that would be really great. I'll pay whatever it's. Yeah, costs. that would be that would be really great. I'd pay a thousand dollars. Cause that I, they're just like they're, th- yeah. That's it's, that it's, band. It's the blueprint. Yeah, it is. The progression of that band is, ugh. yeah, it's the best of the all best. time. 
<laughs> Favorite album you bought purely based on album art aesthetic? Ooh, dude, Chaos AD. <laughs> that's that's a really good one, actually. Um, try to think. Uh, <laughs> thriller <laughs> for sure. That's hilarious. <laughs> it was definitely just like wonder which uh, like Tower Records nine years old. Wonder what record is like the Michael Jackson record I should get. Fair. There, there. Um, is. for me, I was on a field trip. I think this is like I'm. I'm already into hardcore. I'm a hatred guy. I'm a Crown really? Thorns guy. But I don't have a way to actively Google stuff. But I saw the Ice Pick record in a in like a Tower Records or something mm. on a field trip and just bought it while I was there, mm. and then heard that it was like everything I every guy I like <laughs> was playing in this band. So that was nice, just to discover a new band purely by coincidence on this um, low res JPG that they used for the yeah. album art. Youth of Today can't close my eyes, like the the OG one where he's X'd up. Very For much sure. so. And I'll say, um, oh, I just I just had it and I lost it. Son of a biscuit. Not sure, but okay. that's a good question. I like that question. Tenchi Muyo asked, does Bo have riffs? No. No. You got any in the tank right now? Um, You know what? I find myself... Um, when I when I try to write a heavy riff, it always comes out as very monochromatic, very predictable. So I tend to not even bother. Are you saying live on the stand that you have no riffs? Yeah, we've established this. But I'm I was you gave from, me a slogan. It was playful hazing, and like and it came from a place of like no, he's but it's a joke because he actually does. But you're saying you don't. Um, I'm just my brain isn't in that. That mode. You're not a writer. But I did. A writer. I did spend like the four hours before the set with, like, fucking around with like a soft riff that that I'm enjoying. Soft riff. That I have a, a melody to. You I have mean, a riff. I did Wolf Note, you know, yeah. and and like that, that was, was you. that was um that was certainly collaborative, but like most of the the songs started with ideas and stuff that I had. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I just don't have a. I don't have. I don't know how you fucking do three goddamn things. Like, I don't know what you're. You got to like alternate, basically. Don't do them at the same time. Yeah. The answer. When you when you finish one, give that part of your brain a rest. Do the other one. Sometimes people go and they, they have uh, droughts, you know, and I'm just on like a 35 year drought. And it's just, you know, it's just how it is. I went once went 27 years without having sex. And, and then, then again, again for seven years. All comes back to Michael Scott. Uh, X Brains X, who has the hardest merch game in heavy music? Oh. And then somebody said the only answer to this is Cold as Life, and Cold as Life is a great answer to this. I would I say hardcore-wise, Cold as Life, uh, typo merch. Dude, some of the, like, the offense mechanisms, like, some of those, like, the just, old. Just actually, like, brilliant things. Yeah. Um, you have shirts. a rather impressive and extensive Marauder I do. shirt collection. And some of the, I mean, like you're, you're not going to beat the Marauder, the face shirt. Yeah. The like demo. The weird, cover. Yeah, yeah. The demo cover shirt. You're not going to beat that. And you're not going to beat the fucking Brooklyn, you know, life is pain shirt. Yeah. The, like, the life is pain design is like the best hardcore shirt ever. Yeah, it's probably and the, the, the the best wishes down but not out tour shirt. Is, down but not out. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, let's see the video of Colin kicking the guy in Austin. <laughs> For uh, bathroom tier list, Starbucks S. Everything else. <sighs> COVID F. ruined so much of everything, dude. What are you so saying? So much. Um, when, when I was out of town recently, there, were, I would say 50, 50 Starbucks bathrooms under maintenance. What? It's not, Yo, reliable. I'm shitting on the door. If that happens, it's not a reliable source anymore. That can't be. Where were you? Mm. Northeast. Undisclosed. Undisclosed location. Uh, okay. but, but, but also like, um, when we were at Furnace Fest, when we were at, when I was in LA, I would like the Starbucks and, and, um, Panda Express that I went to the combo 
bathroom is sorry out of out of order. That's I can't. I COVID. Can't. COVID. It. I mean, yeah. I mean, it literally. It literally is. Was like, okay, we don't have to do this anymore because of COVID. Why? Like, let's just not do it. Let's anymore. just not do it. You know, we'll shit in the back. I was they, so they can... afraid of free refills disappearing. Oh yeah, forever. Genuinely <laughs> terrified. Uh, Alex Prince Bach, Red Bull flavor tier list. You like the other flavors? I only I can only drink the the zero sugar ones. I'm a sugar free man. You know, so like I'm not drinking heavy, so I'm, I'm not, not drinking having the, the watermelon. Flavor. I'm not doing the spring, no. the summer, none of that. There was a coconut berry one that was cool. What was the good one? The cranberry. That was like the original, like, oh. Oh, they're trying something new. They're trying something new. But it we're made just, my teeth feel like I had socks on them. Yeah, we're not like those it. guys. We're Sugar Freeman. Sugar Freeman. Bo, what is the sample at the beginning of Unreality off Post Human? Ah, I can I can answer that. Um, that was from a movie called Hell's Angels by Howard Hughes. Okay. Old enough that it's it was public domain. Wow, isn't that the best? Very good. And um, the sample is, are you mad? Can't you see? They're just words. Mm. And in the movie, it's in reference to being drafted into World War One. Wow. So the guy's going off to die and he's saying, are you mad? Like, these are just words on a paper. You don't have to go. It's money. All they want is money. Right. Um, and we kind of, while we were listening, and I, I wanted to reference this, this movie, we were like listening through parts through this like kind of monologue this guy has. And we noticed that that part was like, had a rhythm. Are you mad? Get to see the just weren't? Get to see the just weren't? Mm. Are you mad? And we just kind of it matched the BPM, and there you wow. go. Wow. Really? No royalties for public domain, babies. Did you know that uh, any like piece of military art or design is public domain? No. You ever see the the, the Twitching Tongues hoodie with that's like it's like a green hoodie, and we have yep. all those military patches. I, on I it? have it. Those are all public domain. That's why we were able to just do whatever with them. Those really? are real things that we just put our name on or our logo on, basically. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea. Stolen They're all Valley. real, like, patches. Sorry, wow. Bruce LePage, if you're listening. <laughs> Bruce LePage, just so you know. Friend of the show. Everybody, I, I mean, nobody gave us flack for the World War V veteran jacket thing. And, it, and we wouldn't have done it unless Bruce gave us permission. And I was like, Bruce, is this offensive? And he's like, mm -hmm. "I'm no, I think this is sick. So, so there you go. I wouldn't print it today, but no, yeah, no, but one of the sickest things ever, right? Uh, another funny thing from Post Human is there's another. There are other samples on that mm -hmm. that are from like a um, a Twilight Zone, that are from a from the movie From Hell, mm. but it's it's us reciting it. Oh and yeah, then, I did. And I had to fucking do that. with it. I had to do that on gaming yeah. gaming purpose because they yeah. wouldn't pay for it. Because they wouldn't, yeah. So, Iron yeah. Giant. I had, to, really? I had to recite the the song, The Duck and Cover, or The Vibes Superman. Superman. That's, that's just me singing the song. Uh, what's the best mosh and shoe of all time, and why is it the Air Force One? I love Harm's Way, baby. That's from Gerard Harm's Way Doolin. <laughs> Thank you, Gerard. HWD. That's good. What a guy. Uh, I don't really mosh anymore. I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm not a Pittman. You still got that in you. I do. I got that dog in me. <laughs> uh, it's. I mean, I. I guess an Air Force One is probably similar to a Jordan. It's like just a, a Jordan Vans. One and fit. Wore Vans. Yeah, Van. That's see. That's the craziest thing ever. Why is that? Vans. Like high that's tops. A, that's a destructible shoe. I mean, I have. Also, Van you ain't doing any damage. Spin kicking in some Vans. I you know? see, but that, there's the difference. I'm I want a deadly to... weapon on my foot. I did a I did a, a flip dive once at a United Blood during terror, you and I caught a I caught a girl with the heel of my Red Wing, right on the bridge of her nose. See now that's and we that's made eye up. contact, and I did like a <gasps> kind of a thing, and she was looking at me like fucking furious, and I never found her the rest of the right. fest, and I felt really bad. So if you're listening, I'm sorry. See, I love spin kicking with some Red Wings on. I Get out of my I way, you know. I, I I don't I never even when I was like really moshing, I would never spin kick. You don't got it in you. I was a youth crew kid, you know? know. Yeah. You wanted to doesn't, hug me. Doesn't translate. I'll, I wanted, I'll gorilla press your ass. Then I'll here. hug you. You know? Yeah. 
<laughs> top, top lessons. I would love to see you gorilla press me. Oh, that'd be awesome. Can we do it next time? <gasps> yeah, I, could, I feel like I could, I could probably do it. You, you, I'm 200 pounds. Unbalanced weight. Would you, would you go up for me or are you going to sandbag me? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't sand. Are you kidding me? You'd go up for not. me? Of course. Then I could do it. Okay. I could do it. Um, top lessons from old heads. This, this is a big one for me. So when I was 14 years old, I started posting on a website called Strange Notes. Okay. Which was Todd Jones and Ryan. It was basically the guys who made the original Sound and Fury. Sound and Fury, yeah. Made a message board. Like a California version of the B9 board. Okay. We had one. We had ChicagoHardcore.net. Yeah. So, and I was running rampant on there. I didn't know that there were consequences to things you said on message boards. So I was just talking. And I didn't understand that these were all people that lived near me and could whoop my ass, basically. You know? Wow. Wow. So I was I would just ask for downloads of like new bands from new records coming out on the labels run by the people that ran this message board and didn't understand why that was a problem. And like some bands got mad at me. Some people got mad at me and Riley dude, Riley from sound and fury made this post that was like, they banned me at first and then Riley unbanned me. And he said, the thing we need to remember here is that there is, this is a 14 year old kid. Yeah. Choosing to, to like follow hardcore. Try. Yeah. Trying like his this heart's is, in the right place. That's all he's doing here. Yeah. Is trying to discover new music. And like he'll figure out kind of the faux pas of, of like what not to do. But I think it's important that we welcome him and keep him here. So Riley is like wow. my day one OG. And like Gr one of my biggest straight up one of anything I do, he's one of the biggest supporters. Gorilla Biscuits, no reason why. That's that's what that song is about. See? To beat up on a poser skin. Amazing. Um, I have a weird one, okay. but it comes to mind, so whatever. The first show I ever went to was a, was a no effect show in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And during the show, this is a weird thing to talk about. And I'm sorry if it's going to make the episode end on a weird point, but it, it stuck with me. Um, there was a couple that was following a guy and a girl that were following me around the show and like groping me. I was 13. What? They were like grabbing my shit and grabbing my butt and following me around and then like leaving the venue out on the street, like did it again and like winked at me. I was 13. This is a couple. A couple. Guy and a girl. So they, just, I, they really dug your vibe? But what's fucked up? <laughs> saw you from across the venue. We uh, saw you saw from you, across the play place. The, and the we pit, were really yeah, digging right. your vibe. They, the thing that was fucked up is in my mind, I was like, oh, that's what punk shows are. Like, oh, that's just, that's just what God. people do at punk shows. Because it was my first one. I didn't know. So Jesus the, the reason I'm even bringing that up is it was once I realized how fucking crazy that was, I never saw them again or any, it, obviously that's never happened again. Yeah. It made me, um, vigilant for young people at shows. I love whether, that. whether attending or, or playing or whatever. It just made me realize like, like, oh, there's like a little kid and I, granted I was 13. I was getting there. Yeah. But like, if there's like someone who's young, like, I actively try to make sure that they're in a spot. Where That's safe. wonderful. You know what I mean? So it's like a silver lining to a really weird situation. And I was fine. Nothing, you know, but nothing, still it could have very well could have, you could have, it could, or it could have been like a, a very aggressive older yeah, guy. Totally. Totally. Really weird. But I've it, never it, had an experience like that. That's it crazy. taught me a lesson was, was the reason I brought it up. Wow. Great. I mean, no, yeah. I feel thing. like, do we, do we pick this up next week and maybe make it a two-parter? Because we have truly not even scratched the surface. I would love that. It's fine with me. We don't have a guest lined up. We're over. We're at over two hours. Yeah, we're at we're at where we should end for sure. Yeah, and I'm, I feel like maybe we pick up next week with Bo. Okay. Uh, Bo <laughs> being touched. No, we don't, we don't need to do that. It's fine. They, was there a white sauce involved in this interaction with them? You're a real echo. What is Colin? Colin is Colin dope is as fuck. a bastard man, a real so low-down son of a Wow. Son of a what? Did you say you're calling my mom a bitch? It's basically. Basically. You know I didn't I, I didn't say it. Mm -hmm. Echo said it. Well, uh we're I think I think this is a two-parter cuz okay. there's there's 1 million questions left. That's amazing. I love so, it. This is what I, I want. Yeah. I know people like the guests, but 
It's hard to coordinate. I watched your thing with that other podcast. Um, please remind me of the name of the show. Scoped Exposure. Thank you. What'd you think? Uh, I thought I, it was good. Did I do a good job? I thought you did a very good job. I, I was dreading to see what you were going to say about me, but it was very pleasant. Yeah, I love you. Why'd you laugh when you said you would put me on the Big Brother show? Did I? Yeah. You said he would have the worst time. <laughs> if you were on actual Big Brother? But with all these friends of mine? It just would be funny, I think. Because you're a wild and crazy guy. I just think you you are so in your own head sometimes mm. that in like a way that really only me and like five other people in this world can see. Mm. That I would I would get a personal kick out of it. <laughs> that you would enjoy. That's all it is. Um but one thing that you said was wrangling the guests. Just the fucking worst, the worst thing ever. So. And for those of you listening, that still remains the worst part about this. Of so. all time. But that was part one, I guess, of, uh, guess so. of, yeah, of yeah, this yeah. episode 30 special Q&A. So 31 will be the, the uh, continuation. So listen to it so that the numbers are good. <laughs> uh this show has seen unbelievable growth in these 30 episodes. And we uh, will for sure continue to have guests. I'm not saying that. We're yeah, no, guests. it's, it's just, I mean, it's nice to have a breather. These will so, still be rare, but, and I, yeah. and I want them to, when they happen, I want people to be like, yes. Yeah. Right. It's a just the love, love between the two hosts. Exactly. And there's plenty of love. You fucking cocksucker. You're a real bastard, man. All right. You know we'll see you all next week uh, and enjoy the show tonight in Brooklyn if you're coming. If you are not coming, bye. Thank you all so much for the, the birthday wishes. Thank you oh, yeah. so much. Happy birthday, Bob. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>